and Michael Remus. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Big weekend for the Winnipeg Jets. Fun, fun night Friday at the rink downtown. And a great start to the road trip last night in Seabus. Jets with two straight wins, three of their last four, back in first place in the Central Division getting ready to uh, up their game tomorrow night, taking on one of the best teams in the National Hockey League, the New York Rangers. Mike McIntyre is on the road with the club in the Big Apple. He'll join us coming up a little bit later on in the program to uh, talk about the big weekend and focus in on the Rangers tomorrow night and everything that's to come on the road for the Winnipeg Jets. Huge weekend for the Moose as well. And the Moose have been playing some great hockey uh, it, listen, three weeks ago, the Moose being in the playoffs, I'm not sure seemed very realistic. Um, it is very much realistic right now. And a big part of that is Thomas Millich. He was named the AHL Player of the Week. And he's going to join us a little later on in the program as well. So we'll uh, get inside the Moose room, talk about the good vibes happening, and uh, a wild season for Thomas Millich that's taken him to the East Coast League, to the Spangler Cup. And now, with an 11-5-1 record in the American Hockey League for Manitoba and a big part of what's happening on the good side of things for the Manitoba Moose. So, going to be a real fun show. Great to have you all with us. Shout out to everybody listening on the podcast. And, of course, to uh, all of you with us live right now in the YouTube chat. Great to see everyone here. Hit that thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed to the uh, YouTube channel if you haven't already. Listen, just before we bring in Michael Remus, i got to give a big thanks to the sponsors that make this show happen each and every day. Of course, our friends at CoolBet. Looking forward to the CoolBet lines a little later on. It was a big, big weekend for the lock shop. Shout out to you, Scotty Scheffler. What a stud performance at the players yesterday. We'll touch on that a little bit later on. Of course, the gang at Princess Auto, the great people at Consolidated Supply, the Winnipeg Jets, Little Brown Jug, Wallace & Wallace, F Apparel, Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge, Canadian Club, Modern Man Barbershop, Manitoba Battery, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, and we will get to a why not question of the day for the great fine, the fine folks over at Not Auto Corp, but Waverly and McGilvery. Let's get this party started. Michael Remus, what's up? How was your weekend? Yeah, Winnipeg Jets sweep the weekend. I feel like you've been saying that a lot lately, Huss. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of fun here. So I'm having a lot of problems with my computer, actually, so I'm a bit thrown off. But yeah, I mean, great weekend. Winnipeg Jets sweep, so uh, very exciting stuff. Um, you know, listen, we're going to hear a little bit of uh, audio from both games over the course of the weekend. But first things first, uh, Friday night was one of the most fun nights of the season in the stands at Canada Life Center. An absolutely awesome crowd, sold out, what, 15, 225, I think was the number. And listen, this wasn't one of the top teams in the league by any stretch of the imagination coming in. Everyone expected a much better performance from the Winnipeg Jets than they put forth on Wednesday in that loss to the Nashville Predators. Not only did the Jets step up, but so did the crowd. And as I tweeted out after, I think, the first intermission, I mean, the 300-level concourse was just packed. People, we they were in party mode. There was no doubt about it. And there was many fans that were flooring it. And it was uh, it really added to a great, great atmosphere. And that was the last Friday game of the regular season. 
People made the most of it. The team stepped up with a great performance. LB with another shutout. And uh, hard to imagine, you know, considering the way things went on Wednesday against Nashville, um, hard to imagine a better night for everyone that went downtown to Canada Life Center and a better way for the Jets to take off on the road, um, kind of getting that bad taste in their mouth of Wednesday out in uh, in fine form, led by LB and, of course, Tyler Toffoli, who we'll be speaking quite a bit about tonight. Yeah, I mean, these Friday night games, I was getting flashbacks as to that game in December against the Bruins where the Jets came out and played uh, played so well. And, you know, you had that game Wednesday, didn't go your way. And, you know, Mark Shafley's back. You had the Velarde news as well Friday morning. But they came out and really just took it to the Anaheim Ducks. And, you know, the Jets... They had struggled in February against taking it to teams, you know, out of the playoffs and below them in the standings. Remember close games against Chicago, close games against Arizona. And, you know, after getting severely outplayed by Nashville, uh, blown up by Vancouver, uh, to come out and just really take it to uh, two teams who have zero playoff aspirations, I think huge for the club. They'll have to do it against teams that are in the playoffs, uh, of course, but I think you want to be feeling good heading out on the road, and of course your new guy, uh, Tower Toffoli, big part of those two wins uh, with four goals over the weekend. Yeah, listen, I mean, and one of the other things, just speaking about Friday night before we get to last night, the uh, the response of the crowd, I think probably the coolest moment of the entire night was when Toffoli scored his first, and the the thunderous ovation which got even louder when the Jets game ops folks, people kind of really focused in on Toffoli. You could just hear it build and build in the crowd. Um, Good on Jet fans for uh, giving Toffoli such a warm, warm welcome into Winnipeg. And, um, you know, you heard Rick Bonus talk about it afterwards. What a cool moment that was. And if anything, it sparked him even more. He scored again after that and probably could have had three or four in the third period. Man, um, well, first of all, I love that was the second goal, the one where he went to the net, and you, you, know, you like the way he can score us. He's got a great shot. We saw it yesterday, but he also you know goes to the net, and they haven't really had guys that do that the last couple of years. So you know the players that they've added um, really fill a role and, and fill holes in the types of players that they have. Um, so I you know I love that goal off the skate, but yeah, it seemed like he had a number of shots after they put him out on the power play. And he tried, you know, had many more shots and uh, couldn't get that third goal. But uh, the crowd appreciates all these new players and uh, giving him a big ovation. Uh, you know, welcome to Winnipeg, Tyler Toffoli. And I'm sure it's just going to be getting uh, louder and noisier at Canada Life Center as we continue on towards the playoffs. I see Spill saying, I did not partake in the wave. But it was not the worst timed one I've seen. That I mean, listen, it was full go zone for the wave. You know, when you're up four or five in the second half of the third period, being the superstitious individual I am, I was worried that it, the wave was going to snuff out a shutout for Loren Brassois. But that was not the case. If anything, the Jets kind of fired it up from that point and uh, continued to put pucks on John Gibson and got things done. So, I mean, like top to bottom, just an absolutely amazing start to the weekend for the Winnipeg Jets. Um, And then they continued last night. Although, as we heard from Bones yesterday, um, and we'll play the clip coming up, um, I think he said something to the extent of, we weren't fooled by the scoreboard after the first period. Um, Connor Hellebuck stepped up big time, made some great saves and, you know, the Jets got that early goal right off the bat. A great start for the Shifley line. Kyle Connor scores, what, 25 seconds in. But I think you can make the argument that they did get away from it a little bit in the first period. But to their credit, um, they had a little chat in the first period. And the final 40 minutes, for the most part, all Winnipeg cruising to another win yesterday, Reem. And, uh, you know, it's exactly what you expected the team to do and what they were able to accomplish now going up for, certainly on paper, the toughest game of this road trip against the New York Rangers, who are right there at the top of the league standings. Yeah, nice five-game roadie has going through all the New Yorks, New York Rangers, New Jersey Devils, New York Islanders, 
And then uh, Washington. So the afternoon, back to back on the weekend, noon Saturday, eleven thirty a.m. Sunday, and and yeah, I mean, look, got off to a great start. And Tyler Toffoli talking after yesterday's game. Yeah, nice to get out, uh, meet up with the boys uh, on the, on the road. That's where the bond. That's where you bond, Hus, on the road with the boys, and you go for team dinners and all that. Stay in the hotel. You get them on the bus. So great start and. Hopefully they can keep it rolling because I think there's some, you know, nice to beat up on these teams. You know, good teams do win the games they're supposed to win and beat up on these bad teams. Like 12-1 us over two games. Uh, really impressive stuff. But um, you got to do it against the teams that are in the playoffs. So Rangers, they're a very good team this year. I'm looking forward to that. But I love seeing Jets, you know, Jets, Rangers uh, on MSG and Madison Square Garden. Chris Jericho always talks about that, how when it's with the Jets, you know, really puts them... Uh, on the map in the world's most famous arena. So we'll see how it goes tomorrow night. And the Jets are off today, so we don't have any updates on lines or injuries or anything. We'll have to wait uh, for that tomorrow. Um, this is going to mean nothing to the people on the podcast, but are you using the hockey card cam now or something? What? Uh, yeah, I'm having... You got to go to a different I'm, angle, and before it was like you were shy, and it was just a shot of me for the first eight minutes of the show. Um, my camera was glitching when I started to so unplug it and plugged it in, and... I'm using a spare camera right, I see. right now as I've been trouble shooting the whole time. So um, It's an interesting look, but uh, you're still bringing I'm it. I'm doing what I can. As I don't are know. the Jets are. As are the Jets are. Reg Dunlop, how softening on the wave? I, my, I have maintained my wave take for a long time. The wave, while I'm not a personal fan uh, of it overall, there's a time and a place for everything, much like singing na-na-na-na, hey-hey-hey, goodbye. Uh, it is it is a it is a great crowd celebration when the game has been won, and it has a a track record of when being done way too early, in blowing up in your face in spectacular fashion. So a little bit of superstition as well, but also timing. But as I say, the timing. I mean, a packed house on Friday with everyone partying and you're beating the crap out of the opponent in the third period. That literally is the go zone for the wave. So uh, my only, like, that wasn't going to change the game. I was highly invested, though, in an LB shutout. And, uh, you know, for a minute, Reem, we'll get into, we, we are officially back full tilt on Jennings' watch. And to win those two games on the weekend and only give up one goal, absolutely massive for the Jets because... They had been the leader for a long time, but Florida had basically caught them. And now it's weird when we're talking about this. And again, the Jennings Trophy for your not people not knowing it is for um, the best defensive team in the league, the best, the lowest goals against. And while it's great to have games in hand when it comes to the standings, when you're comparing against teams that have played more games against you, you know that, you know, you've got to play those games and there presumably will be goals going in your net. So the Jets, to, to you know, for the recent shutouts that they've had, another one from Brassois on Friday and then just one goal against yesterday puts the Jets in a great situation once again when it comes to the entire league. Now, we'll just sort by goals against right now. The Jets are number one in the league with 158 goals against. And the Florida Panthers, who have played one more game than Winnipeg, have allowed seven more goals than the Winnipeg Jets. So presumably, let's just say their average is less than three, but let's call it three in that makeup game. That'll give the Jets a four-goal cushion right now on the Florida Panthers when they have each played well, with 14 games remaining. And... <laughs> You know, it's something we'll talk to Mike about as well. The want to get LB in for the 25 games so he can be on the trophy. First things first, you got to win it. Um, but the trend was a little concerning the last couple of weeks. They're back to it. And uh, one goal in the weekend speaks for itself. Yes, I do wonder if uh, if they look to get... Sorry, if they look to get him in like in a non, even if he's not starting, um, you know, maybe they put him in a backup or pull Hellebuck or... And get kind of creative down the stretch. I wonder if they will get creative instead of you know using him strictly as a starting role. So uh, I think Jennings watch certainly on. I think you get excited at the idea 
uh, of Winnipeg Jets getting a trophy. We had Kyle Connor here after he won the Lady Bing. Um, so we'll see if, you know, Hellebuck's won the Vesna before. A Jennings would be super cool. And, you know, I was tweeting with Adjusted Hockey on Twitter who puts in all the numbers. Um, you know, trying to figure out who's Hall of Fame worthy. And I think if Connor Hellebuck was not part of a Jennings trophy, it would strengthen uh, his Hall of Fame case, which has gone up. And I don't think we're on Hall of Fame watch, but I think he's on the right path as we approach this contract. And uh, for career numbers, his winnings, you know, his number of wins go up among some all-time leaders. So, um, yeah, Jennings watch officially on. And I wonder if he does, you know, he hasn't, what, has Hellbuck been pulled this season, Huss? Like, I don't think he's been, he's well, been pulled. That's a good question. And so, like, why, you know, maybe they they pull him a game to get something, uh, get something going there. So we'll have to wait and see. Well, even, listen, even if they have to sort of backdoor it and, you know, you got a face off in the other team zone with three seconds left in a period, just do a quick BS change. Can't you do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, now, I think Brassois is going to play more down the stretch. And all he does is put up goose eggs right now. So, I mean, there's no reason why you wouldn't feel confident with him. But, I mean, listen, a lot of this, fairly or unfairly, I know LB's got a lot of fans. It does come down to the starting goaltender, how he's feeling when he wants to play. But these guys are tight. And we're going to talk about it with Mike because Mike actually sat down with both of them together for an interview that I think is coming up in the free press. And bottom line is, I think they both know that if this team is capable of winning the Jennings Trophy, LB's a huge part of it, and he should be on the trophy. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens there, Huss. So um, we're all on the, the trophy watch, but also on, you know, Central Division title watch, as I've joked. The Jets need to get back to some unfinished business from 2019 where they had the lead and had that terrible second half. Friday's win did put them in, you know, the big tie for first place and in the central with Colorado and Dallas. And you look at uh, what the schedule is or the standings are right now. Here we are. The Jets, 91 points. Uh, Colorado also 91. And, oh, there's Dallas, 91. But, hey, you look at games played. The Jets with 67 games played. That is uh, one fewer than Colorado and two fewer than Dallas, who's got a really nice uh, 69 games played. So by the the more precise points percentage, uh, the Jets are in first. And, you know, we're heading down to the home stretch here, Huss. We have 81 minus 67. Uh, what is that? Uh, 15. 14, 15 82 games. Oh, yeah, 82. 82. So I don't, know, I don't know why I said 81, but uh, 15 games left. So that's big. And, hey, goal differential. The Jets are up there as well. Um, so this is certainly exciting stuff. Well, and, and you know what? I mean, Vancouver has kind of slipped up, and they lost 2-1 to Washington, who, man, that team just completely turned it around after getting pumped by Winnipeg and Edmonton. They bounced back with wins in Seattle and Vancouver and are right there for a playoff spot in the East. They got Calgary tonight. But the Jets are actually just one point back of Vancouver with the game in hand right now, and I guess points percentage back on top of the West as well. So... They took care of business, what they needed to do on the weekend. Now it gets a little tougher, including a big one tomorrow night against the Rangers. Yeah, real big one for the Jets. So looking forward to seeing how the Jets, Rangers stack up. As far as lineup changes, you know, uh, I don't know what they're doing on defense, but it seems like we'll talk, maybe Mike has more ideas, but they've been going for a bit of rotation. Put in Stanley and Schmidt, who had been out. Uh, they put them in on Friday and sat Miller and Sandberg. And Sandberg has been very good, uh, by no means deserves to be healthy scratch but I think the team knows they've got you know eight pretty strong NHL defensemen uh, they've got a heavy schedule coming up this is a time where hey you can go with a bit of outfield rotation you see that in Major League Baseball you got like, four good outfielders you can rotate guys in and out give them a rest and keep them healthy and fresh for the games that matter because I think Nate Schmidt he's been solid has all year it's tough to say to that guy hey you're not going to play after being so you know so strong with him and Sandberg, so you know use the opportunity. You're in first. You have NHL caliber defensemen. You can certainly rotate them in and out. So we don't know what the lineup is going to be. You know as far as goalie uh, rotation here, I imagine they're going to split on the weekend. We'll have to wait and see uh, what happens here coming up. But 
Uh, you look at the standings and you see the New York Rangers has, an, oh, there they are, first in the Metro Division. And they've got even more points than the Jets, 94 in 68 games. So I think this is going to be a big tilt. And who's playing a big role for them? Jack Rosovic acquired at the trade deadline. He's on the top line taking over for the injured former Jet captain, uh, Blake Wheeler. So there are some uh, Jet ties. I think Truba, I think he's been banged up. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see on him. But that is a, that's a heavyweight tilt tomorrow. Well, for sure. And we'll get to that. And listen, I mean, when we're talking about this president's trophy race, um, you know, which would be, I mean, I know like in the big picture, does it matter? But it's significant. I mean, you go through the 82 game grind and have the opportunity to finish on top. Never mind certain fans that may have preseason wagers at very large numbers for that. I mean, I think <laughs> we can all agree that that would be a great thing. Um, but just back to the lineup for a minute. And again, then we'll get into uh, the, uh, you know, some feedback from the players. Like we talked on Friday. Okay. It sounds like Schmidt and Stan are both going in tonight. So, okay. I was somewhat surprised that they went back with that same lineup last night. And we can also talk about Cole Perfetti sitting out the two games on the weekend. But I, I'll say this. Um, and you know what? We'll include Stan in there as well. He had a great weekend. Like, there's going to be tough decisions for the coaching staff when it comes to who the 12 players are that they're putting out at forward, who the 6D are. The fact that Miller's in right now, um, I, I think there's a case to be made that this level of competition will hopefully brings out the best, most importantly, in the six guys that are out there. But I'll give both Nate Schmidt and Logan Stanley credit for really good weekends, making the most of the opportunity presented themselves. And, uh, you know, you had to feel good for the big guy who actually got on the board with a big clapper on the on yesterday. Man, flashbacks <laughs> to the playoffs against the Montreal, Montreal. Canadiens. That guy scored two in a game with Dude. that bomb. I tried looking up NHL Edge stats to find out you know, the miles per hour. The fastest he shot this year is 90, just over 97, like point one or something. But... I, don't, I couldn't see specifically on that shot, but that was a bomb. You want to see the guy get on the board, and it's kind of funny. Bones pulling all the right buttons. Nate Schmidt comes in. You know, it was a bit of a bank hole. Hey, he gets on the score sheet on Friday. Uh, they you know, they play well enough, play play another game, and uh, and there he is, Stan on the board. So both those guys score on the weekend. And as far as Perfetti, you know, maybe you would like to see him you know, get a game against you know one of the lower tier teams in the league it would be a good opportunity for him to get some uh, points us or gain some confidence. But uh, you're going to trust that the organization knows what they're doing for him, giving him a bit of a mental reset and a bit of a break. Cause I think he is a guy who, who can produce points when he's in the lineup, but went through a rough stretch. And, you know, they've obviously made some acquisitions as well that, you know, kind of knocked him down the lineup. And like, is he, you know, they seem to have the right formula here with the third and fourth lines. And I'm not sure if his style is a fit for that. Well, um, just as far as Stan goes, uh, he was the only defenseman on Friday not to get a point. He got a goal on Sunday, and that game on Friday, eight points from the blue line, including a goal and an assist from Dylan DeMello, and three more points for Josh Morrissey. And uh, we're on Morrissey watch. One more point to cash that season over at Cool Bet that we've been sort of waiting uh, for him to get to, uh, you know, one more uh, past 56 to 57 and get the green light on that. But, uh, you know, we'll hear from some of the key performers, including Tyler Toffoli, coming up in just a moment. As I mentioned, Mike McIntyre is going to join us live from NYC in about 20, 25 minutes or so. And then Thomas Millich of the Manitoba Moose. Cannot wait to have him on the program. That's coming up a little later on. But listen, just before we get to the Winnipeg Jet dressing room, Big thanks to a few of the Winnipeg Sports Talk sponsors, including our friends at Consolidated Supply. Well, spring is just about here, gang, and our friends at Consolidated Supply are ready for a very busy spring and summer and the change of the seasons. You know the gang at Consolidated Supply are the leaders in irrigation systems, artificial turf, and of course, golf carts in Manitoba is the official club car dealer with incredible new and used options 
for you in regards to golf carts. They've also got other amazing options for your property, including hot tubs and incredible outdoor kitchens. And of course, they're also the leaders in small engine parts and repair. Consolidated Supply has so much waiting for you. Come on down and see them at their beautiful showroom, open to the public at 1395 Niagara Road East, or find out everything Consolidated Supply can do for you online at cte.ca. Our friends at Manitoba Battery are enjoying the beauty of their new location over on Dovercourt Road. It is officially open, and Donnie and his staff welcome you down at the original location at 1026 Logan, but at the new spot at 452 Dovercourt Drive. And as part of the grand opening celebrations, any battery that's normally $60 or more will save you an extra $10 if you pick it up in store. But, of course, you know Manitoba Battery is your local option with the best prices on batteries of all makes, models, shapes, sizes, whatever you need, beating the pants off the big box stores. And, of course, they will deliver to you for free any battery purchase inside the perimeter of Winnipeg over 60 bucks. It's just that easy. So head on over to manitobabattery.com or pop by and visit the fellas at the new location, 452 Dovercourt Drive, and of course the original spot at 1026 Logan Avenue. Guys, if you need to uh, get a fresh new look as we head into spring, you know where to do that. Get on over to one of the eight Modern Man Barbershops, conveniently located throughout the city of Winnipeg, including their two newest standalone locations on Pemina Highway or on Plessy Road. Modern Man Barbershops offer a variety of grooming services, including haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. The easiest way to make an appointment and book your look is at modernmanbarber.com. Make sure to give them a follow on Instagram as well, at Modern Man Barbershops. And we would also have a huge thank you to the great people at Canadian Club for their continued support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. And, of course... The Winnipeg Blue Bombers is the official spirit of the blue and gold. We'll be counting down the days till we're enjoying CC's at the Rum Hut and the Jim Beam Social House and CC's and Ginger's at the stands at Princess Auto Stadium. But while we wait for football to return, you can always get the great taste of Canadian Club and all their amazing products at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. Pop by today and check out the Canadian Club display. And remember... Always enjoy responsibly. All right, great stuff. A nice little uh, comment from Bart in chat. I went to Modern Man for the first time for a cut. Very nice. I'll be back. Much better experience than I had at TG's. Not sure what TG's is, but uh, yeah, Modern Man. Eight locations. Very simple. I need a visit to uh, the gang at Modern Man. I've been kind of in hat mode for the last few days, so we'll get that cleaned up with a visit down to... uh, uh, down to uh, Modern Man at some point this week. All right, let's get to, uh, well, first of all, let's go back to Friday for a minute. Really, really fun night. Tyler Toffoli with his first couple on home ice. Uh, but Rick Bonus very pleased with the overall performance of the club. Um, just dominating the Ducks for the better part of the game and uh, felt they protected the puck so much better than they did Wednesday night against the Preds. Going through the neutral zone. I thought we we managed the puck so much better tonight. Going through the neutral zone, uh, we made the right decisions at their blue line. If they were gapped up, then we put it behind them and we went to work. If they gave us the blue line, we made the play. But again, once once we got in there, that they gave us a little time. Uh, they were a tired team. There's no question. Um, so give them credit. Um, but we, we hung on to the puck and we were able to make some plays. But the biggest thing was the puck management going through that neutral zone and making the right decision at the blue line. When you do that, you play so much faster. We looked slow against Nashville the other night because we weren't doing those things. So tonight we looked a lot faster because the puck management through the neutral zone was, was spot on. All right, so a Bones very pleased with um, you know the, the change in the game albeit against a, a poor and tired opponent in the Anaheim Ducks, but uh, you got to take care of the team that's on the schedule, and they certainly did that. Of course, as we mentioned before, Tyler Toffoli getting on the scoreboard was a real highlight of the night. Had another one, almost had a hat trick. 
Here's what Bones had to say about the newest Jet forward getting on the board and the way he was received by the uh, Canada Life Center crowd. Listen, that's what, that's what you know. We made a big, good, you know, she having made a great trade bringing him in. He's a goal scorer, and you give him the puck in the right spots, he's going to put it on the net and it's going to go in the net. So, uh, that was good to see, and I love the fans' reaction to him, right? That was outstanding. We've got a, such a great fan base here, such great, fan, passionate fans, and uh, they acknowledged the importance of those goals and welcome him to back to the city again. Yeah, they even cheered um, after that last power play shift that you gave me. He was going off the ice to give Yeah, I that. could hear the all the crowd yelling, shoot. So they were pulling for him. So, Well, and, and I guess a part of that was, um, you know, trying to give the uh, guy an opportunity to maybe get some hats on the ice after he'd scored the second one. And the Jets did get a late power play. They kept the top unit off, but did give Toffoli a chance to get out there. Here's what Bones had to say about putting Toffoli on for the late power play with the opportunity to maybe pop his third. Charlie, yeah, we, we kept the first unit off on the bench. We did. We sent out the, our second unit with trying to get him the, the, um, the, the hat trick, obviously. And uh, you, you've got to give those to players when they have that opportunity, give them a chance, give them a hat trick. And then we sent out our, you know, our third line that's, you know, all of a sudden they, they've got two power play goals. So, um, yeah, but again, we kept the first unit on the bench. All right. So there was uh, Bones just talking about the uh, sort of the end of the game. Now, now, while everyone was talking about Tyler Toffoli, um, LB just keeps on having a brilliant season and further increases his value around the league come to the offseason for a potential new contract. And and hopefully for Brassois' uh, uh, fate, a legitimate opportunity to be a starting goaltender somewhere because he has certainly earned that opportunity. Um, Bones had a high praise for his netminder on Friday. He made some big saves, he did. I thought we gave him a couple of chances that we shouldn't have, and he and he made the big saves. He, we timely saves yeah he, he was he's, he's been outstanding so uh very very happy for him he was asked about the oh sorry john yeah I, he was asked about the really stretchy save in the in the second period showing off yeah. the flexibility he said maybe he was impatient on it but he was happy to give the fans something to cheer but what what do you see on plays like that he the, the how competitive he is he's a fighter in that net he battles hard every shift uh, every every shot he's battling so yeah he may be a little early but he's a fighter in that net man we love both of them we're lucky to have both of these guys we've got outstanding goaltending wade flurry is doing a tremendous job with both of them so give flash a lot of credit as well all right so some high praise for the goaltenders as we mentioned the jets now have a seven goal cushion on the florida panthers who gave up five on saturday which was nice to see. And uh, the Jets do have one extra game to be played uh, against Florida. So presumably some that seven goal, unless it's a shutout in the makeup game, that, that goal will, uh, that number will decrease, but should still have a lead heading into these final uh, 15, 14, 15 games of the regular, uh, of the regular season. Um, the other great thing to see was uh, the birthday boy, Mark Shifley back feeling good and a big part of the win. Here's what Bones had to say about Shife's return. Uh, he had a lot of jump tonight. You could tell, and I love one because he wants to be out there when he's got, and when he knows it, and I, I see it, he wants to be on the ice. So, um, yeah, he was uh, he was feeling a lot stronger, obviously, but he had a lot of jump in his legs and a lot of fight in his game, and I love watching him play when he was as that. All right, so uh, Rick Bonus on uh, Mark Shifley, the goaltending. Um, but listen, leaving the building and uh, afterwards around downtown. Fans were talking about Brassois. They were also talking about Tyler Toffoli, who we mentioned at his first couple as a Winnipeg Jet. Great moment in the in the uh, in the building as well. Here's uh, Toffoli on uh, getting on the board for the first time, and then again with his new club. It was awesome. I mean, uh, got a little taste of it. Uh, our first game uh, with the standing ovation too. So uh, definitely a pretty special moment, and um, helps you nice to get my first one here, and uh, hopefully keep rolling. Are you a guy that really starts to feel it? I mean, you get your second shortly after that, then you got a couple of chances even after that. Yeah, I mean, obviously you, you guys saw I should have had four or five there um, by the end of it. But um, you know what? It was just one of those games I thought we played really well, and uh, it was a matter of time before we started kind of you know piling some on. They, uh, uh, we were we were doing a good job hem hemming them in and uh, staying on their D, and um, you know that was just a really good game for us. All right, so there's Tyler Toffoli, another guy that had a big smile on his face after the game. 
was Nate Schmidt. Um, the saxophone squirtle was rocking. Schmidt was firing the crowd up, and uh, he got on the board as well with a goal returning to the lineup. Um, uh, here's what Schmidty had to say uh, about scoring and about a big win for his club Friday night. I, I liked our, our commitment to just playing the game that we know what to do with the puck when we, when we, when we get across the blue line. I think that's just something that, that opened up the game for us. It, it opened up the game for us when they're D have to turn around and go back and get it every time. And we were, we were all, they have a young defense core, and that our forwards did a great job of, um, you know, kind of setting the tone early for our group and kind of for the entire game. Uh, I like the way we, that's the, that's the, that's the blueprint for our, our forward group, and it allows our D to get up in the play and, and to contribute a ton. I think, uh, Bowen said we had eight points tonight from the back end, and then it's not going to be every night, but it's, uh, something that Union really is, is something that we'd be proud of after the game's over. All right, so a 6 nothing whitewash of the Ducks. Lauren Brassois, the big shutout. And then it was on the bird out to uh, begin this big Eastern road trip in Columbus with the game yesterday. And uh, I'll tell you what, why don't we start off with the post game? Um, we mentioned Logan Stanley got on the board and uh, was also the recipient of a jacket. Here is the Sunday jacket presentation, if you missed it, in the... Uh, a pretty hype jet locker room after uh, the 6 1 win over the uh, Blue Jackets. Hey, great win. Let's get this bird in the air. I'm going to give it to Stan for that hammer. So Big Stan and uh, Vladdy the Batty getting uh, getting the jackets yesterday. And with the goal by Nemetsnikov, Reem, Vlad needs one more, and that will make every single forward on the Winnipeg Jets that's played regular minutes this year into double digits. It really is an incredible stat for a team that we've talked about their depth all year long. Um, Ayafalo got to the double-digit mark last week and now one away from a Vlad rounding out all of the forwards. That is, uh, that's pretty crazy us to think about that. And here's the sheets. Um, and even Sean Monaghan, who's got 21, I think he's got eight or nine of those uh, with Winnipeg. How about Nikolai Ehlers? He hit 20 goals uh, for the seventh time in his career. I can't believe He's even been in the league that that's long time. To- that's that's actually the craziest part to me that Nick Lyles has been in the league long enough to put together seven 20 goal seasons. Uh, Mark Shafley actually he had 40 assists yesterday as well. Milestone uh, second most uh, 40 assist seasons in Jets Thrashers history. That's his sixth. Uh, Wheeler's got eight of those. But yeah, Nino's got 18. Velarde 16 in 38 games. Perfetti 14. Appleton he had the big one on Friday to, for number 12. Lowry, I follow Barrington, Nemeskov, and even on defense, has Morrissey. He could get two more. Dylan, I'm not so sure, but he's hit a career high in goals this year. So uh, amazing. Yeah, we talk about depth, and there it is, number of 10 goal scorers. And you have to imagine I'll have a couple with 20, Shafley one away, Niederreiter two away. Uh, I think that's probably probably about it, but that would make, give you, you know, a couple 20 goal scorers. I don't know if we count. Do we count to Foley? And Monaghan, I'm not, I'm not sure if they count, but when you're in the playoffs and you say, hey, how many 20-goal scorers they have, they would certainly count then. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And, uh, you know, Gus has got a couple. Uh, Rasmus still is looking for one. Uh, but those guys have played not even half the game so far this season. And, uh, I mean, really, you're looking at those regulars, um, which include Cole Perfetti. He's got 14, hasn't scored in a while, didn't play on the weekend. Um, but also, and just speaking of Perfetti, because I know we talked about the blue line choices on the weekend, um, it will be interesting to see how the lineup looks, both from the defense core tomorrow as well as the forward group. And, you know, Rick Bonus, Mike McIntyre talked about this yesterday. Hey, shout out to Wesley Falls. Thanks for becoming a supporter, a member on the WST YouTube chat. Um, Bones in the morning skate, you know, with a long chat, with Cole Perfetti, with his arm around him. Um, we'll, we'll let Mike, Mike was there, and he can kind of tell us the story. But, um, you know, trying to, uh, you know, help Cole along. And, um, you know, it's got to be a tough time for him right now, missing a few games right now, and then obviously seeing what's happening on the ice uh, from, the, uh, from the press box. But yesterday um, was a game that 
well, really was dominated by that second line. And we've been waiting to see how would things look with Ehlers and Monaghan and now Tyler Toffoli. Well, they looked pretty darn good yesterday. Multiple point game for all members of the line. Here's what Bones had to say about quote unquote his second line. It's, it's been it's been good, obviously. Uh, Shauna and Tyler have hit, and we, you know Nick gives that line a lot of speed. So that's what we're looking for, and we just hope it can continue like that. When you see plays like Tyler makes that backhand between the legs pass, and he said that they had actually just talked about that before. Like that's the kind of play that I wouldn't imagine comes easy, and he's just no. joined the lineup, and they're already connecting like he's that. He's got an offensive IQ. He sees the ice really well. He's really good with the puck. Uh, he's patient with the puck. He knows where to put it. So yeah. Right. All right, so uh, Bones on that line. And, uh, you know, I kind of alluded to this comment before. I mean, this wasn't a 60-minute masterpiece. They got the early goal from Kyle Connor, who just continues to score goals. But the rest of the first period was a little bit disjointed, and Hellebuck had to make some big saves. Here's Bones on uh, needing to clean things up a little bit after the first. We, we didn't like the first. Yeah. We weren't fooled by the score. We knew we had to tighten it up. It was loose. We were giving them too many chances off the rush, but we, so we addressed that, and, and and we did. So we weren't fooled by the score. So yeah, we, we know we had to play better. So that's when you know, Kelly probably you know yeah he keeps had to it, make the lead, he right? had to make too many saves that he shouldn't have had to make. It was just uh, once we got that early goal, uh, that lead, and uh, listen, we knew they were going to come at us. Uh, they, Having lost to them you know, to us five nothing in Winnipeg, and yeah. they played really well last night. So uh, we knew they were going to come. They made a push. We made it a little easy for them, but we got to straighten out after that. So, and we got you know, Tyler gets his thirtieth goal, and Scott yeah. O'Neill is another uh, grandfather again. Had a grandson today, oh. so it was a good day for the Jets family. There you go. Congratulations to the Arneal clan with a new addition to uh, the uh, the Arneal line. Um, great. Obviously, I mean, Scott O'Neill's been around. I've had a chance to work with him. Great guy. Love the family. So congratulations to them from everyone here at WST. Um, you finished with the Ducks and Blue Jackets, though. Now it's on the way to MSG. Here's Bones on the upcoming schedule getting a, a little bit tougher, or maybe a lot tougher. We're playing one of the, if not the top team in the league right now. It's yeah. the Rangers. So uh, we know what we, we haven't played as well against the top teams lately as we can, as we're capable. So uh, it'll be a good test for us. So maybe one another good takeaway tonight, Rick, that because you got the big lead, like you could manage the minutes a little more in the third yeah. with a big road trip here? Yeah, we rolled the four lines pretty yeah. much the, right after the second period. We got a 2 3 nothing lead. We rolled the four lines. So a lot of hockey coming up. So we were able to rest uh, and, and, yeah, balance the ice. All right, so there is Rick Bonus. Now, Mike McIntyre is joining us in just a minute or two. Um, but we should play... The uh, comments from Pascal Vincent before we bring in Mike. Here's the head coach of Columbus and what he sees from a team that he knows very well in the Winnipeg Jets. I think Winnipeg makes the other teams look bad in so many ways. They're heavy. They're strong. Um, they have skills. And then you face Hellebuck on top of that. So I think we're, we faced a pretty good hockey team. But as far as we are concerned, the, the few things that we need to do well in order to be successful is we need to compete and skate. And um, if we just take a deep breath against a team like Winnipeg, you're gonna see uh, you're gonna see what you're gonna see. So I thought the second period that's what happened. Not that it was um, a function of everything we've done and a function of everything they've done. Um, but the focus is on us, and and that second period we just we we just didn't push the pace like we usually do. And when you face a team like uh, like I said, the Jets, it's uh, it's a recipe for disaster. I want to extend a huge thanks to the great people at Princess Auto for their support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. Of course, Princess Auto proudly founded right here in Winnipeg and committed to Winnipeg with their headquarters, national headquarters right here, uh, not only supporting Winnipeg Sports Talk, but all of our local teams, including the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. 
as they welcome fans to Princess Auto Stadium this year to cheer on the blue and gold down at the U of M. Uh, Princess Auto, of course, is the place where you'll find the best deals on the most incredible and unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Pop by and see them in store on Panit Road or Portage Avenue West. And you can always shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Uh, we also want to thank the folks at Wallace & Wallace. Speaking of getting ready for spring, you know Wallace & Wallace are the fencing and overhead door specialist. You'll see their fences and trucks all over the city. And for all of your fencing needs, Wallace & Wallace has you covered. What you might not know is that they're also the overhead door specialist in Winnipeg with the largest selection in Manitoba as the Clopay dealer here in town. They can also help you, though, with your maintenance, with the crazy weather, getting cold, getting warm again. This is the time to prevent downtime going into the new seasons. Give Wallace & Wallace a call to book your maintenance and inspection service call today for residential and commercial overhead door sales and service. There's only one name or two you need to know. That is Wallace and & Wallace. And speaking of the change of the seasons, fellas, I think a lot of you may be looking into the closet and realize it might be time to up that menswear game, well, whether you need a suit for a particular event or just want to upgrade your uh, workwear and more, F Apparel is the spot. Um, just an incredible selection of custom menswear waiting for you, starting with suits, beginning at $400, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an amazing selection of menswear accessories. If you are getting married or in a wedding party coming up this summer, make sure to talk to the fellas at F about a 15% discount when the entire wedding party uh, gets your suits at F Apparel. They've also got great deals for high school grads as well, so make sure to talk to the guys at F about that. Um, pop by and see them, 190 Smith Street downtown. You can also find out more online or make an appointment at F. That's ephapparel.com. And as we look ahead... To spring and summer, I am counting down the days to fishing season. And you know on Winnipeg Sports, when we're talking fishing, we're getting fired up to head back to Aikens Lake Wilderness Lodge. One of a kind, incredible fly and fishing experience right here in Manitoba, where you can be on the water in less than two hours from the city of Winnipeg. And as incredible as the world-class fishing is that awaits guests at Aikens Lake, the hospitality of the Aikens team and the Turan family is even better. Head on over to AikensLake.com, find out more about everything available at Aikens coming up, and you can contact them as well about pricing and availability options and booking dates for the 2024 fishing season. AikensLake.com online, and make sure to check them out on all their social channels at Aikens Lake. All right, great stuff. Let's uh, continue our Jets conversation ahead to the Big Apple and welcome in Mike McIntyre, who is on the road with the Jets for the Winnipeg Free Press this week. Mike, what's up? How are you? Huss, I am doing really well uh, in the city that never sleeps. And no word of a lie, I have not slept. I've actually been up since yesterday morning. What? Uh yeah, <laughs> it was. It literally was an all-nighter last night. Not for a lack of trying. This always happens, Huss. I'm a terrible road sleeper when I have a really early flight the next morning. Um, a big part of it is a, a is a fear of like sleeping through the alarms. And I'm talking, like I've got two phones with me. I set the the clock radio. I get the wake up call. It's a full blown symphony to wake me up. <laughs> but that that still doesn't prevent me from like anxiously thinking somehow I'm going to miss all of that and miss yeah. my flight. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, in the in the game and by the time you get back to the hotel, you're kind of wired. So falling asleep right away really is not an option. I'm a night hawk anyways. Uh, so I had to be up really early anyways in Columbus this morning to get to the airport. And then add in the fact that I also had a feature that I was writing today. And as I laid in bed last night trying to fall asleep, all I could think about is just why don't I just get up and write this feature? Um, and so that's what I ended up doing. At about finally, I gave up around three in the morning, 
plunk myself down at the desk in the room, pounded out uh, about 45 inches of copy and hopped in the Uber at five, got stuck on a middle seat. My plan was to maybe try and get a little nap on the plane, the hour 40 minute flight, uh, middle seat, not, not really happening. possible. Um, and uh, I have yet, to, I was thinking of a nap here. We might have a post Winnipeg sports talk nap. I'll try not to fall asleep on the air here uh, while we're chatting. But yeah, so um, I'm, I'm kind of wired, Huss. <laughs> well, it is it is good to have you in. And this is, is going to be a fun trip. I mean, lots going on. I know you're going yeah. to Back to the Future, the musical yeah. on Broadway, which uh, is quite exciting. But um, listen, what's really exciting is this matchup tomorrow night. Before we get to tomorrow, though. Let's go back um, to the future. Let's talk about this. Yes, exactly. Uh, we'll get in the DeLorean and go to Friday and Sunday. <laughs> Uh, listen, I think when you coming out of that Nashville game that Winnipeg was going to want to be much, much better than they were against the Preds. They certainly were um, for three periods against the Ducks. And as we heard from Rick Bonus, they weren't fooled by the one nothing lead after the first period, knew they needed to be better, and they were. And uh, then the goals started coming, and they really didn't stop. Yeah, I mean, as, as I wrote in my game story last night, like, look, nobody's – planning a parade for the Winnipeg Jets because they pummeled the Anaheim Ducks and Columbus Blue Jackets. Not going out on a limb, Huss, to say neither of those teams will be winning the Stanley Cup this spring. Neither, of course, is either even going to be close to having a whiff of the playoffs. Not only are Anaheim and Columbus bad hockey teams, they've also had some bad luck. Both are decimated with injuries. Like They were already really thin, especially post-trade deadline. You look at, you know, some of the names that got moved out. And then now you add in, like, the guys that are injured. Um, you know, look at the Ducks, Leo Carlson, Trevor Zegras, Radko Gudis, Mason McTavish. Like, they're some of their best young players and a veteran defenseman. And then last night, I mean, you've got Adam Fantilli, Patrick Lyonne, um, Sean Corrali, who's a really good sort of two-way center. And, again, the list goes on. So, the, oh, and the fact both those teams – they were playing on a back-to-back, -back, so the Jets were rested. So, I mean, all of that, like, what can you read from a 2-0 weekend and, what, 12-1 on the cumulative? Um, not a whole lot. If anything, though, I, I guess there's a bunch of Jets that, you know, feeling pretty good. They, they got some points. Uh, the power play uh, connected three times on Friday, which was a season high. Um, you, you managed the minutes as you just heard in that clip from Rick bonus. Uh, so yeah. And I mean, bottom line is you can only play the schedule you're dealt. Um, a lot of people criticize the jets. They say historically they play down to their opponents. Well, they just outscored two week opponents, 12 to one. It wasn't, you know, perfect all 60 minutes of both games, but they, they, they were more than good enough to get the job done. Now they put that behind them. They got four valuable points, you know, and, and they've, they've only managed to just keep up with Dallas and Colorado, who seem to keep putting the points together as well. This really is one heck of a three-team race in the Central that is probably going to come right down to the final week of the season if, if you know, you look at how it's playing out. Uh, and things get a lot tougher, as you said. Tomorrow night, MSG, a Rangers team that's, I think there's only three teams ahead of the Jets right now in terms of point percentage in the NHL. The Rangers are one of them. Uh, so the Jets will have their work cut out for them. But, you know, they're, they're going to be feeling pretty good about their game. Let's see if they can step up in weight class and, uh, you know, land a few punches of their own. Yeah, listen, you want to, uh, I mean, first of all, to get to this point, you have to take care of those teams below yeah. you in the standings. The Jets have been pretty good at that all season long. But if you want to show you belong with the big boys, um, this is a great opportunity to do that. Um, Mike, uh, let's talk about the lineup. Uh, it was interesting, uh, I think, on Friday to see Big Stan and Nate Schmidt both go in. I don't think Dylan Sandberg had sat a game at any point this season. Um, and listen, the team stepped up. They played very well. They had eight points from the blue line in that game and went right back at it with the same lineup last night. Um yeah including Cole Perfetti. And I know you had a great kind of, I uh, kind of teased this earlier. You can maybe speak to Perfetti after the blue line, um, as well as what you saw with Rick Bonus sort of handling Cole. But um, 
were you surprised that they went right back with that pairing as well? And what does that mean moving forward um, with Samberg and Colin and Miller uh, missing the last two games? I'm not surprised. You know, I said it up in the press box kind of towards the tail end of Friday night to some of the other guys and uh, up there. I said like, okay, now what, how do you take, how do you take Schmidt and Stanley out now? You just pitched a shutout. Nate Schmidt scored. Um, you know, what's the message if you take those guys out? Not again, not that Colin Miller and Dylan Sandberg came out of the lineup because of poor play. But the fact is the Jets had lost the previous game. And that always makes it a little easier, you know, whether it's just uh, the reality or the optics, if you will. It, it makes it a little easier to make some lineup changes when you're coming off a loss. When you're coming off a 6 nothing victory, um, and one of the guys presumably that you're going to yank back out of the lineup just scored his second goal of the year on the power play, part of a 3-for-3 three three night. You know, I, I, I was thinking, okay, Nate Schmidt, he's probably for sure in the lineup. I thought maybe Logan Stanley comes out and Dylan Sandberg goes back in. But I think one thing Rick Bonus is trying to do here, he's he's almost establishing pairs. And, you know, Schmidt and Stanley are kind of a package deal. Um, they've skated together a lot. You know, they were in the lineup at, at various times this season. Um, and they practice together. And I think they're trying to develop some chemistry with Colin Miller and Dylan Sandberg. So I suppose the bottom line was, you know, Rick said, well, I'll call an audible. Um, I want to play everybody on this road trip anyways. So, you know, if he had pulled Schmidt and Stanley out and put Sandberg and Miller back in last night, inevitably, Huss, he was going to put those guys back in at some point later this week anyways. So I guess you just reverse the order a little bit. Now, I suppose the argument people will now say is, well, okay, but how do you now, how do you pull them out now? Uh, they won again. No, it wasn't a shutout, but it was 6-1. And, oh, now Logan Stanley scored. Um, so how do you pull him out, you know, coming off his first goal? I don't know. I mean, I think everybody recognizes who the opponent was, what the circumstances were. If I'm the Jets and if I'm Rick Bonus, look, congrats. Good job, Nate Schmidt, Logan Stanley. You guys had really good showings these last two games. But – on our depth chart, you're seven and eight. And so we're going to, we're playing a really good team tomorrow night. This is the mindset I would have if I was the coach of the Jets. And I want to put my A lineup out. And to me, that includes certainly Dylan Sandberg. Um, you could make an argument. There's been many times this year, forget about, you know, bottom say or bottom pairing, third pairing. He's been a top four defenseman in terms of his play, and he stepped up at times and played in that top four. So I'm finding a way to put Dylan Sandberg in, period. If that means you also put Colin Miller back in because you want him to play with Sandberg, fine. I think everybody would understand, including Sandberg, or including Stanley and Schmidt, I think everyone realizes what's going on here. There's a bit, bit of a platoon, um, load management, call it whatever you want. Competition. Uh, Competition for sure, and and we've seen Stanley and Schmidt have good outings. So you know what, put Sandberg and Miller back in. That they don't have to score tomorrow night, although that would be nice if you're the Jets. Um, but you know, yeah, the notice has been served. You got a couple guys who perform well, and they're going to get another chance here soon too. The one, and you mentioned it, the one to me, Huss, that I think is maybe way more puzzling than the blue line situation, which I totally understand is Cole Perfetti. I go back to last Monday night. Cole Perfetti, I thought, had his best game in ages against the Washington Capitals. He was really good. Uh, he hit two posts. Um, so, I mean, a little luck, and he would have broken that long scoring drought. I think he's just got the one assist, but he hasn't scored in ages. But it, it really felt like, you know, he was on the cusp of something. Then fast forward to Wednesday, he's still in the lineup. And you know what? The Jets weren't very good, but it wasn't just Cole Perfetti. They all weren't very good. They really weren't. Um, and that game 4-2, that flattered the Jets. They scored the two goals late. That was a domination by the Predators. So, okay, you take Perfetti out for Friday. I, I can understand that. To me, though, 
and again, you know, unlike maybe Schmidt who scored, like, yeah, David Gustafson was was good. But I I would have liked to seen them find a way to get Cole Perfetti back in last night for a couple of reasons. One, I think because his game had been trending in the right direction, save for maybe a, a, a group blip on Wednesday, but also because of the quality of competition. That just seemed like a really nice entry point for the kid. And, you know, you saw the fourth line last night. They came up with, I guess, at the end of, what, three goals? One of them got called back, Morgan Barron. But Logan Stanley's goal was with the fourth line out on the ice. Um, Vlad Nemesikov scored his goal. That's obviously a fourth line goal. And then Barron's goal, which got overturned on the high stick. So a good night. And, and you know, to me, I just wonder what, what could that have done if Cole Perfetti was playing last night? Um, and, t- you know, you mentioned it. It was interesting at the morning skate in, in Columbus yesterday, Huss. Um, there was, you know, they were nearing the end of the skate and they were doing some drills with the guys that were going to be playing that night. And, and Cole Perfetti, of course, wasn't one of them. So he's over at the side by himself, just sort of kneeling down, kind of watching. And, you know, who knows what's going through his mind. But Rick Bonus, I think, maybe sensed this. And look... There's people that will rip Rick Bonus, say that he's not handling Cole Perfetti right. I, I don't buy that. I, we talked last week. Uh, I like – I think he's got a track record with young players. And Jason Robertson, I gave the example of how Jason Robertson said how much Rick's treatment meant to him. But I think Rick Bonus did something really positive yesterday um, in that he came over and, you know, he didn't just come over and give a little tap and skate away. He actually crouched down – Uh, with Cole Perfetti and like for five, six minutes. And it was Rick Bonus. I don't know what all was said, um, but it looked like a very motivational, like he he had his arm around Cole quite a bit, patting him on the back. Um, And, you know, it's pretty clear this was a veteran coach who probably sense the young players having some some struggles. And again, I get that there'll be people that say, well, Rick Bonus is contributing to that because, you know, maybe the way he's treating him. I, like I said, I would have liked to have seen him in that game last night. Um, he probably now doesn't get back in tomorrow. Again, step up in competition. The fourth line looked really, really, really good yesterday. So I'm guessing you stick with that fourth line as you had it. And so he has to wait. Now, Rick Bonus said everyone will play on this road trip, so he probably gets in, whether it's Thursday or one of the weekend games. Um, but, you know, I think it was important at least that Rick Bonus went and spent that time with them. And, you know, we'll maybe find out down the road exactly what was said and what the value of all that was. I just thought it was a really interesting kind of quiet moment that, you know, doesn't show up on highlight reels or anything like that. But it does speak to the, I guess, the – the battle, the ongoing battle that is to manage emotions and players and roster decisions that are now with everybody but Game Vlardy healthy. There's a lot of roster decisions to be made every game. And so some tough decisions do have to be made. Yeah. And, and you know, and I said this on Friday, I, I'm sort of with you. Um, I, I thought there was an opportunity this weekend to maybe get called in and, you know, hopefully see some good things happen for the young guy and get him feeling it a little bit more. And, and to be honest, with the very uncertain nature of Gabriel Velarde's yes. injury and what's going forward, I mean, I kind of made the point that, you know, while right now, if you're putting out a playoff lineup of your top 12, maybe Cole Perfetti isn't in it. Um, big picture, he's far from a finished product. I mean, you've seen tons of players that, you know, at times have struggles early on in their career. Uh, before they become that finished product, which I mean, Cole's got a lot of time and a very, very bright future ahead. But sure. in the in the short term, I was sort of with you. I thought, you know what? Maybe you get him in there and see whether some good things can happen, because you never know if all of a sudden you're going to need him to be playing potentially in that top six in a way different role that he's even playing right now. Um, all that being said, it didn't happen. I'm sort of with you. I kind of doubt that that return comes tomorrow. But I would think that at some point on this road trip, whether it's Jersey or whether it's one of the two back-to-backs against the Islanders in Washington, that maybe we do see him back in that lineup. Um, The one thing that is difficult for him is, to your point, I mean, the guys that have been in on the fourth line have been 
really good. I mean, Morgan Barron's been a mainstay all season long. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got Alex Iafalo playing up right now. I think David Gustafson is, you know, making the most of his opportunity back in the lineup. And listen, those are good problems to have, I guess. And then Vlad, I mean, Vlad scored yesterday. He's the only guy of the regulars that hasn't yet got to double-digit goals. He can do that with one more on the season, which is a wild stat at all and speaks to the depth of the Winnipeg Jets. Um, but, you know, we can talk about the fourth line and whatnot. Let's talk about the guy that really did steal the show, both games, Tyler Toffoli. And, you know, we think about the impact that Sean Monaghan made uh, very quickly after turning into a Winnipeg Jet. Um, Toffoli... <laughs> Once again, making Kevin Sheveldayoff look very, very good. What a weekend he had. And I mean, it seems like both on the ice, we see the videos from the dressing room. He's seemingly every night involved in the jacket presentation one way or the other after wins. This has been just an absolutely perfect fit. And even more important right now with Velarde's situation. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what, that second line, we're waiting to see what might Ehlers be able to create for a player like Tyler Toffoli. Early returns, very, very good. Well, the the give and take that they each had on each other's goal. I mean, Tyler Toffoli's uh, assist was Yeah, ridiculous. can we talk about that between the legs pass? Like, we're talking about the goals. Let's get to so, that. I mean, that would, be, that would be impressive if it was between two guys that, you know, played all season Shapley together. Shapley and Connor. Sure, because that's the sort of thing you're like, okay, they, they fool around after practice and – they do that all the time. You know, they instinct it. But again, Tyler Toffoli only got here a week ago. He's had like one, maybe two practices, a couple morning skates. And I thought it was really interesting when I I asked him about that. And he said, actually, we were we had just been talking about that on the bench right before the goal, right before that shift. And I basically told Monaghan and Ehlers that that was something I was going to try. And, you know, the way he described it, almost made it sound like he missed Monaghan with the pass, but, oh, well, Nikola Ehlers was there to clean it up. Um, and, you know, one thing I'll say for sure, and I think this is pretty evident, people seen video, and there's a there's a really funny video going around of Toffoli on the bench. I don't know if it was after his second goal last night where he just looks like, he just looks so content with himself. Like there's a bit of a smirk and there's a lot of funny memes I've seen. Like people are now taking that and go like, that's me after I, you know, shovel the driveway or <laughs> that's me after I run an errand for my wife kind of thing. Um, you know, this is a guy who's obviously bounced around a little bit. Um, coming from a not, not so great situation in Jersey which he's going to get get to go back to right away here uh, later this week. Uh, and, you know, all of a sudden he's playing with, um, you know, an old buddy in Sean Monaghan. And there seems to be, you know, some chem They had a nice uh, – Monaghan had a nice feed the other night on one of Toffoli's goals. And, you know, then him and Ehlers. And this really seems to have unlocked something in Nikolai Ehlers, which, let's face it, Huss – the Jets have kind of been trying to do that for a while here with, you know, varied levels of, of success. Um, I, I don't even want to call them really a second line anymore because no offense to Shifley and Connor and Aya Fallow, who's there right now, and I would suggest is more of a placeholder with the hope that Gabe Velarde would get back on that wing with Shifley and Connor. Uh, but the Monaghan... Ehlers to Foley trio, they're playing like not just a top line, but a high end elite top line. And again, this is with very few reps under their belts. Yes, it was against two lousy teams. So maybe, as I said, off the top, let's hold off on the parade, but um, some really encouraging signs for sure. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting to, to consider what, a guy like Tyler Toffoli, what a guy like Sean Monaghan might be able to do um, when the stage gets even bigger uh, and the playoffs start. And, you know, you need that additional scoring. It can't just all be on Shifley and Connor's shoulders. The Jets now have a litany of weapons, and if they could get Gabe Velarde back, uh, they are the deepest, I think, team that 
you know, up, up and down the forward group. And as you said, double digits. I mean, the amount, not only double digits, Huss, they're on the cusp of having like six guys hit the 20 goal mark, right? Um, I mean, I know Toffoli and Monaghan's obviously haven't all come with Winnipeg. Uh, then you got Ehlers, Connor, uh, Shifley is right on the cusp at 19. Nino Niederreiter, who's I think at 18. So, you know, that's that's also impressive um, to have like a dozen or more double digit scores and half a dozen at least 20 goal scores. Combine that with the goaltending that obviously this team has. They get the special teams cooking a little bit, and they've certainly been trending in the, the right direction lately on both the PP and the PK. Suddenly, the Jets look like a, a very dangerous outfit and a very difficult out come playoff time. Hey, um, listen, we're going to get to the goalies in a minute and really looking forward to a story you've got coming up in the Winnipeg Free Press later on today or in tomorrow's newspaper. But you mentioned Nikolai Ehlers, and um, you did have a chance to talk to Nick heading into the Columbus game, and uh, it wasn't as much about what's happening on the ice, more about uh, someone that I think is still held in incredibly high regard here in this city. Yeah. Patrick Liney, who, um, you know, obviously is away from the club right now on a mental health uh, a break in the player assistance program. But <clears throat> just touch quickly on, uh, you know, the, the connection between Ehlers and Line A and um, what, what you gathered from your conversation with Nick about Patrick. Yeah, he was, uh, first of all, extremely candid. And, and I, you know, publicly thank him for that. Like, it's not easy for any athlete to open up about, you know, emotions and feelings, especially considering for the longest time, that was kind of taboo, right? Mm. Um, but, and we're seeing this, and, and it's a very, very good thing. Um, there is a lot more openness, a lot more comfort in talking about one's struggles. People talk all the time about their physical injuries, although, of course, hockey players often want to mask that and, you know, they play through a lot of pain. Um, but talking about emotional or mental injury is not something that's happening very often, but we are seeing more examples. And there's a number of players, you know, Patrick Laine, that Instagram post back in January where he talked about stepping away from the game to work on his mental health. Um, you know, I think caught a lot of people by surprise, but for those people who maybe know Patrick a little bit and have seen the various sides of him and how hard he can be on himself. We saw that in Winnipeg all the time, Huss. Like he'd have a bit of a slump and, you know, nobody was was their own worst critic the way that Patrick Laine was. And Nikolai Ehlers, of course, was there every step of the way. Those two were inseparable with the Jets. So being in Columbus this weekend and, you know, I, I was struck as I walked to the morning skate yesterday, there's the huge mural of Patrick Laine on the side of Nation Ride Arena. Um, and, you know, as I wrote in the piece, that's unfortunately the only way to see him these days because he's not around. Um, but his good buddy, Nick Gehlers, did open up. He's been in touch with Patrick Line on a regular basis, said he has good days, bad days. Um, and, you know, really talked about how mental health can be so fragile just when you think you're maybe turned a corner. Um, so, you know, as he said, and I wish there was more clarity to, to share with people to say, okay, he's coming back on this day or whatever. You know, the way that you would if somebody had a sprained ankle or whatever, a shoulder injury. You know, you say, okay, four to six weeks or six to eight or whatever. There is no timeline for Patrick Laine. And even Nikolai Ehlers, who knows him really, you know, as, as well as anybody, he has no idea either. And, you know, he just said, this is bigger than hockey. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to read too much into it to say ominously, but he said, I, I really hope he comes back. Um, Patrick Lyon, I think he's got two more years left on his deal. Um, obviously, you know, things haven't gone nearly as well on the ice when he's been able to play. He's battled injury and consistency. Columbus obviously stinks. Um, and so he's had a really rough go of it. And I just know a lot of Jets fans – uh, still care very deeply. I see that all the time at the rink, the number of Line A jerseys. You see it all the time too, Huss. Uh, he's a beloved figure in Winnipeg, and I'm sure a lot of folks are, are very much uh, thinking of him. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. It was great to get a little bit of insight from uh, Nick. Great to hear that he's in conversation and uh, in contact with Patrick. And, I mean, regardless of what happens, um, you know, moving forward, this is a young guy that came here uh, – 
lit this city on fire during his time here. And uh, many people, myself included, you know, still kind of wonder how things might have been different if certain things would have been handled differently. But you know, you yeah. can't change what's already happened. You just hope that he's getting the help that he needs and he can come back, show the God-given talent that he has, um, which um, was such a benefit to us here in Winnipeg and really to the entire hockey, uh, the hockey world. And it has been a miserable season and on so many levels in Columbus. And, um, you know, you just, you just hope and uh, wait for uh, hopefully some good news on uh, yeah. Patrick getting back to doing what he loves. And uh, that has always been playing hockey and scoring goals as well as just about anybody in the, uh, in the national hockey league. Mike McIntyre is with us in New York, getting ready for the Jets to continue their road trip tomorrow against the New York Rangers. Um, you know, we kind of started off this show with the Jennings watch, and it was a big weekend for the Winnipeg Jets in the Jennings watch because Florida gave up five to Tampa on Saturday, and the Jets knock off two games with only one goal allowed. So uh, the Jets, well, they have to still play one more game to meet Colorado, uh, Florida at 68 games played. Now have a seven-goal cushion, which is a big turnaround as to where they were about a week ago at this time. Yeah. And listen, Hellebuck's getting, you know, the majority of the kudos. He uh, this is the favorite for the Vesna Trophy. But, man, Loren Brassois just continues to show that uh, it has not just been a one-man show this year. We'll get to more on the possibility of getting LB into a couple games, if need be, to get to that 25-game mark. But tell us about this conversation you had a chance to have, not just with one, but with both of the goaltenders and what we're going to be seeing in the free press very shortly. Yeah, the rare, uh, the rare one-on-two interview. Uh, and it was actually Connor Hellebuck's idea to, to do them simultaneously, which um, which worked out. I mean, it worked out better than I could have imagined. Uh, my idea was to do kind of a, a deeper dive on their relationship, their partnership. Of course, this is the second go-around. They, they were together for three years. The first time around, uh, LB went to Vegas for a couple of years, wins the Stanley Cup, albeit injured when it happens um and then of course the reunion this year and you know really interesting circumstances Huss, because i think lb was brought in as the big insurance policy if connor hellebuck had been traded or you know he may have been the starter right now on this team if things had worked out differently um so I, i'm struck by there's a lot of symmetry here like these guys have the same agent who happens to be a Manitoban, Ray Petkow, uh, who I also spoke to at length for the piece. And Ray had tremendous insight, Huss, that I'm uh, I'm anxious for, for folks to read um, about contract negotiations, the, the negotiation with Connor Hellebuck on the extension, the negotiation to bring Lauren Brassois back, and maybe most importantly now, looking ahead to the future, the elephant in the room that everyone acknowledges, including Lauren Brassois, he is not long for Winnipeg. And, you know, he was very candid as I spoke with him and Connor Hellebuck at the same time, saying that um, it's bittersweet. That was his word, bittersweet right now, knowing that that time is kind of fleeting because there's going to be teams, and Ray Petkow flat out said to me, I know my phone's going to be ringing off the hook July 1st. There are teams out there, and Wade Flair. I spoke to Wade Flaherty as well in depth yesterday about this. Uh, he said he knows there's a lot of people around the league watching Lauren Bessois. There will be teams making him an offer that, quite frankly, Huss, he can't refuse. And it's an offer, as much as the Jets would love to make that kind of offer, they just can't uh, because there's just not the starts here, not when they have Connor Hellebuck now locked up long term. So, um, it was fascinating. Like these guys took me way back to 2017 in Kelowna, British Columbia, which is where they first met. Lauren Brassois was with the Oilers organization. Connor Hellebuck was just early in his sort of starting career in Winnipeg. These guys meet at a goalie camp. Wade Flaherty was there. Um, Ray Petkow was there. And to hear them all kind of talk about the first time they met, how these guys, there were other goalies there. These two gravitated to each other almost instantly. And they started golfing together and all kinds of things and almost sharing a brain in a way, in kind of a funny way, which comes out in my conversation with the two of them. So it really looks at, you know, what began as a, a, a 
an unofficial partnership because Lauren Brassois wasn't even signed with the Jets when they first met. A year later, he does sign with the Jets. This partnership turns into a really strong friendship um, that goes beyond, you know, the hockey part of it. And yeah, there's a lot of emotions right now because everyone kind of realizes that um, the end is probably near for the hellebuck Brassois tandem which has been such a great one. As you mentioned, they're in the hunt for the Jennings Trophy. Uh, the only little problem, and I, I pointed this out to Wade Flaherty, and he kind of smirked when I did. I said, you know that Lauren Brassois needs to get like seven more games, right, to get his name on that trophy if you win it? And he kind of, almost with a bit of a sigh, said, I know. Um, now, for those folks wondering, okay, does that mean are the Jets going to find a way to get him seven more games? I'm not so sure about that, uh, Huss. You know, Wade Flaherty said, as nice as all of that would be, um, there's a, another trophy that we're kind of really going for here, and we're gonna we're gonna run our rotation. We're gonna keep things, you know, with that sort of big picture in mind. Now, I don't know the answer to this. I'm maybe you do, Huss. Maybe Remus has looked into it. Can you game the system at all here? Like, can you put him in for two minutes, a couple relief appearances? Why not? And does that like? I don't think it says twenty five starts, right? I no, think it's no, just... no, 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 no. It. I, I don't believe it does at all. Like, and I, I suggested even at some point, if you get a whistle, you know, <laughs> in the other end with two, three seconds left in a period, just There's basically throw him in that. You know, it counts as a minute played. It counts as a game and appearance in it. Now. I mean, how much they'll be on top of that going forward? Because again, they're this aware team of it. Is, they are it, very, they are aware of it. I can tell you that. Um, as far as starts go, just I mean, thinking about this next trip, there's obviously they're each going to play one of the games on the yeah. weekend. I think. Um, it's, like my, is he going to get jersey? Yeah, I, I think he gets two this two out of the next four. I do. And a big part of why I think that, Haas, is because I expect Connor Hellebuck probably gets the first two home games next week as well against uh, Edmonton and Vegas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if Connor Hellebuck, if he plays three out of the remaining four, which would be four out of five on this trip because he played last night, it really would be six out of seven, I think because I, I expect he's in net and then probably Lauren Brassois gets that Ottawa game on the Saturday. But so, yeah, I mean, look, Connor Hellebuck's playing tomorrow night. I don't think that's a revelation. He, it's a prime showdown. He's playing at Madison square garden. So the Jersey game would make sense. And then, you know, then probably Hellebuck plays Saturday against the Islanders, Brassois Sunday. Uh, and then of course, Hellebuck would play the next Tuesday, Thursday. So just kind of looking at the schedule, like let's just assume for a minute that every game matters till the final game, potentially for the Jets. And whether whether when I say it matters, whether that's because obviously not to lock up a playoff spot, that's going to happen with lots of games to go mathematically. But I'm talking more like they still have a chance at first or they still have a chance at the worst for first or second, which means home ice advantage or maybe they have a chance not just first in the central but first in the west which would mean home ice advantage in the first three rounds if you could get there uh, maybe it means first in the entire league right i mean if you're thinking really crazy here um but so let's assume that the games still count right to the end i just don't see look i'd have no problem with giving lauren brassois seven seven of the final 15 there's z there should be zero issues in terms of lack of confidence in his ability. I just think we know Connor Hellebuck is a workhorse. He likes his work. He'd play every game if he could. I, I just don't see them going like eight, seven. I, I, I just say it's probably more like 10, five. Now, if the last few games of the season, the jets have their spot locked up, well, maybe now you ease off a bit, but I think again you'd also you wouldn't want to ease off too much because there's that fine line between rest and rust, and I think you'd almost leave it to Connor Hellebuck and Wade Flaherty to dictate how that plays out. So, yeah, I just don't know that sevens in the cards, but I do like your thinking, and I was kind of thinking the same thing that as long as it's just appearances and not starts, 
There's got to be – and you know what? Even if it is starts, fine. Play him for the first minute of a game then and then put Hellebuck in. It, it, he would be the equivalent of the opener in baseball. And then you bring your uh, you bring your long man in to uh, to get the, the bulk of the innings. Um, th- I, there'd be ways around it too. I suppose if it's still up for grabs, you know, in the final week or two of the season, it'll be interesting to see if the Jets do start to play that game. Well, and, and I'll tell you what, even if the coaching staff, <laughs> I'm going to go one step further. Even if the coaching staff maybe isn't entirely on board with doing everything you can for it, considering how close these guys are, oh, it wouldn't surprise me if all of a sudden with 30 seconds left in a period, Hellebuck has some sort of an equipment malfunction <laughs> that forces his pal LB to get in. But I mean, I'm just looking at this. We've got seven games left in the month of um, March. And if LB gets Thursday against Jersey, Sunday against the Caps, and then presumably that start on the 30th at home against the Senators, yeah, that puts three more. You're then looking at four more games. Um, and then the April schedule is as follows. There is significantly more time between games. Yes. I think for three of the games, there's two in between. But you've got the Kings, Flames, uh, Wild. I mean, the full Central Division run. Wild, Preds, Dallas, Colorado. And then those final two games against the uh, Kraken and the Vancouver Canucks. You're probably looking at, I'd say, two starts for sure. Probably three. And then at that point, you're right literally on the cusp of it. One or two, sure, right. Yeah, it's you're right. I mean, maybe he suddenly just... He gets a loose, uh, a loose uh, lace on his skates, or a, a loose strap, or something. You're right, and and again, my my feature and the way these guys talk about each other, the way they 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 cheer for each other, like you know, and and all of them talked, especially Wade Flaherty and Ray Peckout talked about. They've seen other goalie tandems where things have not been nearly as rosy. Who can forget the the sword to the back? Um, in, in, you know, the flurry Robin Leonard situation. And yeah. of course that was Alan Walsh, but you got to think that it was a little testy between the players. I don't think Alan Walsh tweeted that without his client's permission. All that being said, there is none of that. There's a competitiveness. Absolutely. But it, it's extremely healthy and I'll leave you with this. I mean, Connor Hellebuck flat out said to me as much as, as sad as he would be uh, to see Lauren Bressois go, he said, I'll be the first guy to say he should be, he deserves to be a starter in this league. And, and his great line to me is said, I'll write the reference letter for him. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it's been uh, great to see uh, what both of those netminders have done in. And speaking of netminders, AHL player of the week, Thomas Millich joining us in just a minute, just before we go. Nice. How about this run the Moose are on right now? I mean, it looked pretty dark a month ago or so. They rattled off eight of nine wins. Um, They're getting the goal scoring, and and Millich has been such a great story. I mean, ECHL, Spengler, I mean, now with a great run. You know, when we're looking at the big picture of goaltending, um, you know, he's been a great story so far this season. Looking forward to talking to him in just a couple minutes. He has, and I, I know uh, you got to. We got to go, but maybe we can d- delve into this more next week. Huss, we talked about Cole Perfetti earlier on. Would Cole Perfetti benefit from at least a brief? He doesn't need waivers. He could go down to the Moose. There's no risk of losing him. I. That's something I've been bouncing around in my head. I don't know the answer to it. Um, I. I could see both sides of the coin. Some would say it actually would make it worse. He's established himself as an NHL player. That would almost be seen as a setback. But then there's the confidence thing. And again, that scene I witnessed yesterday at the rink, um, could he benefit from going down? They obviously got a good thing going. If all He's not part of anything right now with the Jets. Could he benefit from at least getting some of that, soaking some of that in and staying ready? I don't know the answer, but it's an interesting thing to ponder for sure. Well, hey, listen, I mean, uh, uh, it, well, I'll tell you what, um, he'd look great in a Moose jersey right now with what this team's doing, and that would sure significantly would. up some of the offensive potential now that they've got everything else going. Um, Mike, great stuff as always. Have a good time. Enjoy Back to the Future yes. on Broadway. 
First of all, a big game tomorrow night against the New York Rangers, and uh, we will look forward to catching up with you uh, next week, or uh, who knows, maybe even later on this week if something really special happens. We, right you're so always one link away. Thanks exactly. for doing this. You bet. Enjoy Folks, the week. Folks, uh, check out the free press, I guess, a little later on today for that extended feature on the hellebuck Brassois pairing and the very interesting one-on-two interview that Mike McIntyre did with uh, the two Jet goaltenders. Speaking of goaltending, coming up in just a second, we're going to welcome in Thomas Millich, who's been leading the charge for the Manitoba Moose as they've burst back into a playoff spot, winning eight of their last nine games. That is coming up in just a second, right here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. And as we get ready for the playoffs and the playoff excitement increases, do not forget, Winnipeg Jet fans, that you can get priority access and count yourself in for the entire 2024 playoffs right now by putting down a deposit on season tickets or ticket packages for the upcoming 2024-2025 season. Head on over to winnipegjets.com slash deposit a full list of the benefits of being a season ticket member or ticket package holder for the upcoming seasons there, map and pricing and more. And if you do it now, you will be in the same seat for all of the whiteouts down at Canada Life Center, hopefully for a long and very fun playoff uh, playoff run for the Winnipeg Jets. Again, right now, the We're All In campaign continues. It's winnipegjets.com slash deposit for more on that. And while speaking of the playoffs, probably a trip down to Royal Sports is going to be necessary as everyone gets their whites ready for the Winnipeg Jets and whoever they're playing come April. There is simply no better sports store anywhere than Royal Sports. And if you're a Winnipeg Jet fan, thousands of pieces of Jets merchandise, whites and otherwise, all of the jerseys and still plenty of time to get your jersey customized with your favorite player, name, number, just in time for the postseason. So much more than just Jets merch as well, though, at Royal. Tons of bomber gear, Major League Baseball, with Jays starting up right now, NFL and more. The biggest hockey section in town, all of the spring sports loading in by the day, and tons of cool stuff on the King Skate Snow and Surf side. Pop by and see it for yourself. Royal Sports, 750 Pemina Highway. And make sure to give them a follow on Instagram at Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. And speaking of those playoffs, I mean, if you're not in the building or the team is on the road, you know the best place to get together with your gang to watch the big game is your local Boston pizza. All the Jets games on the big screen with big sound. Not to mention those ice-cold schooners, world-famous BP wings, gourmet pizzas, and some great new treats on the BP appetizer menu. There's simply nothing like getting together at your local BP. And if you are staying at home, though, you can get the great taste of Boston pizza by ordering online at bostonpizza.com. You train day in and day out, learning new techniques, approaching new concepts, and living out the thrill of achieving your goals. Building a craft beer is no different. While you spend your hours on the ice, we spend ours here. Brewing our trademark beer. Again, again, and again. Here's to pushing the status quo and challenging ourselves to build something memorable. 1919 by Little Brown Jug. All right, we just had a great chat talking a little goaltending and Jets goaltending with uh, Mike McIntyre. Uh, it is an absolute pleasure to welcome in AHL Player of the Week as announced earlier today, Thomas Millich of the uh, Red Hot Manitoba Moose. Thomas, welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk. Great to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you very much. Pumped to be on the show. And uh, first things first, congratulations. Must have been cool to get the uh, the, the notice that, uh, hey, people are paying attention to what's going on here in Manitoba and AHL Player of the Week. I mean, uh, it comes with winning hockey games. You guys have been winning a lot lately. Tell us about the uh, vibe around the room right now and uh, the momentum you and your teammates have heading into tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a pretty special accomplishment and nice feather to have in the cap. But, you know, of course, it doesn't come alone. It's, you know, really speaks volumes to how well we're playing right now and, you know, how we're really tapping into that playoff mentality. So we're looking to keep it going tomorrow morning and, you know, for the rest of the season. Yeah, tomorrow morning, we'll get to that, an early start, a very unique uh, school day game for uh, for the Moose tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, folks, if you're with us right now or listening on the podcast, 
Go to winnipegsportstalk.com. We do have some tickets for the game on Saturday at Canada Life Centre that you can enter to win. Listen, before we get to the present right now, uh, I want to talk to you about this season overall because, um, you know, listen, for a young goaltender making the move to pro hockey after doing pretty much everything at the junior level, sometimes the path is maybe different than you know, you would expect. Um, the bottom line is you got to be playing games and you've played a lot, but in a number of different spots, the East Coast League, the Spangler Cup, and now really finding your groove in the American Hockey League. Tell us about the journey that you've been on uh, up until today and the uh, Player of the Week announcement. Yeah, absolutely. You know, going into the season, that was definitely my goal to, you know, make the transition to pro. And, you know, I've had so many cool new experiences so far and been able to play games at multiple levels and like you said the Spangler Cup what a incredible experience that was as well so just enjoying the ride you know I mean listen you know goaltending is a little different um than you know forward or defense um you know there's only so many starts uh and sometimes it takes a little longer to establish yourself as a pro and get to where you want to be Tell us about going to the East Coast League earlier on, how you handled that, what the organization said to you, um, and how you made the most of that opportunity that really, I think, kind of was a springboard to the success you've had now with the Moose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like you said, I think it was, you know, the biggest priority was just playing games this year, you know, regardless of what level it was. And I think going down to the East Coast was a really good thing for me. I got to, you know, I think it really facilitated the transition to pro and, you know, getting those games and, you know, really helped the transition to the American Hockey League here. Now, um, you know, we mentioned, obviously, uh, you kind of came on the radar, I think, to, well, people here in Winnipeg, um, you know, through you know the Western Hockey League career, obviously, but also being a part of Team Canada at the World Juniors. And uh, you got a chance to be part of another Team Canada, the Spengler Cup. I mean, was that even on your radar? How did it come to be? And then we'll talk a little bit of what that experience was like at, you know, a really one of a kind event that is something I think a lot of hockey fans, uh, if they have the opportunity to check out, should definitely do. Oh, yeah, no kidding. You know, it was kind of a something that just came out of the dark, out of nowhere. Definitely not something I was expecting to happen. And, you know, it was kind of one of those things where the stars just aligned, you know, being down in Norfolk at the time. You know, maybe if I'm up with the moose at that time, I wouldn't have been able to go, but. You know, just being able to have that opportunity and, you know, just all the all the memories I'm going to have forever of such a cool experience was, you know, something I'm forever grateful for. Well, as a young player, I mean, you were in a very unique situation because normally the Spangler is a lot of guys that have had great pro careers. Uh, they may have been in the NHL for a while. They may be playing in Europe. Um, not often do you have, you know, players as young as you are taking part in that event. What, what was it like kind of getting there? And, and what did you gain from some of the players that, you know, were on that squad that come with a lot of experience at multiple levels? Yeah, no kidding. It was a pretty cool group of guys that we played with. You know, there's guys that played long NHL careers. There's guys that have played in Europe for the bulk of their career and a couple other younger guys like myself. But, you know, just being able to surround myself with a group of guys that, you know, they're all just there to, you know, win a tournament and have a great time and, you know, really just getting to hear some stories of what it's like at different levels, different leagues and, you know, playing in different countries too. I imagine that, you know, for someone that had played with Canada before, anytime you get the call and get the opportunity to wear and represent your country, it's a, it's a pretty easy yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember from my, my first under 17 event, just, you know, how special that was just being able to wear the maple leaf and, you know, I, not too many guys can say that they've been able to wear it on multiple occasions. So, you know, like you said, anytime I get the chance, I'm saying yes right away. How, uh, you know, I, I just have to quickly ask you about the world juniors, because we know the, the, the scope of that event here in Canada, as opposed to anything you'll do at under 17 or under 18, what's it like making that team? And what's it like kind of having the amount of pressure that comes with being the Canadian netminder at the world juniors? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that was, you know, probably one of the coolest things I'll ever do in my life. And, you know, being able to have the tournament in Halifax there in Canada and have the home crowd behind us, you know, it was, you know, easily the coolest atmosphere I've ever played in. Well, and of course, you were part of that the Seattle uh, team that, uh, you know, did huge things at the uh, at the Western Hockey League level. And um, 
that it was time to uh, to turn pro. You know, it, it's weird. And I mean, we look at you know the success you're having right now, and I mean, I think Hellebuck was a, a fifth round pick as well, if I recall correctly. And the guys you know, on the verge of winning another Vezina Trophy. How did you handle being overlooked in the draft, and then you know continue to play at a super high level? Then talk a little bit about getting picked by the Winnipeg Jets and having this opportunity of uh, that they believed in you and uh, thought you had a bright future, uh, you know, as, as part of their system moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I'm pretty fortunate. I've had a pretty good mindset going into it. You know, I was never too concerned about the draft. I've heard tons of stories of guys that either got drafted late or not at all. And, you know, there's so many different paths to make it to the NHL. So I've always believed that I'm on my path. And, you know, if I keep working every day, then, you know, it's it's all going to work out. So just being able to, you know, have that draft, you know, acknowledgement was pretty cool. And, you know, especially to Winnipeg, it was, you know, everything about it has been class so far. And, you know, obviously a pretty good situation with getting to play as a 20-year-old as well. Well, you know, no doubt. And I remember when, uh, you know, after your pick came out for the, um, uh, for camp and like, and it's a little different because normally when goaltenders get picked, you know, whatever they're 18, 19, I mean, they're a few years away. Um, you very quickly made this transition right now. What was that? What was that pro camp? Like, you know, coming in, I guess with the rest of the prospects, um, and maybe if you can speak to, you know, being in the organization right now and looking up at the big club and seeing a team that's on the verge of potentially winning a Jennings trophy, and a guy leading the way like a Connor Hellebuck that, uh, you know, in a lot of ways is the standard for elite goaltending right now in the NHL. Oh, yeah. The whole, whole training camp experience was awesome, you know. Especially we, you know, we split into a few different groups. So you're getting to spend time with, you know, different guys from from the team. And, you know, I just thought it was awesome getting to get out there with Helly and Bersois and you know, just see what they do on a daily basis, how they prepare, how they, you know, their practice habits, all that. And, you know, really seeing – what goes on behind the scenes that leads to so much success that they've been having lately. So, you know, just being able to share the crease with them for a short time was, you know, definitely something special. Tell us about the, the goaltending coaches. I mean, I'm sure in camp you're probably working with flat somewhat, of course, uh, former moves goalie, Drew Stafford. We had him on the program. We talked about you a couple of weeks ago. Uh, um, how much contact do you have with both of those guys? Drew McIntyre, excuse me, uh, Drew Stafford. Um, but also like how much contact do you have with, uh, with both of those guys throughout the year. And in particular with Drew McIntyre being the moose goalie coach, how, uh, how much has he helped you kind of get settled? And uh, obviously, you uh, with the results that have been following from both you and the hockey team. Yeah, of course, you know, working with flats in camp was awesome, you know, to get him to, you know, just see how his mind thinks and, you know, pick his brain a little bit. And then, you know, the rest of the season, I've been, you know, talking with D Mac with Drew McIntyre tons and, you know, he's been incredible for me. You know, he's a great kind of mentor sort of guy that's, you know, obviously fresh off a pro career in the last few years. So getting able to, you know, see how his brain works as well. And, you know, I think we have very similar philosophies towards the game. So, you know, we we get along really well, and he's helped me out a lot. How uh, just the AHL experience, and especially since you've been here and now playing regularly, um, what have you learned about the the level of play in the American Hockey League? And, um, you know, how has that transition been, as we've talked about a few stops before you sort of solidified yourself as a regular? Yeah, of course. You know, I think the, the transition from the WHL to the AHL is – you know, quite a big jump. You know, the I just say the the average skill level is just so much higher. You know, every team has four lines of guys that can score goals, and you know, just being able to be ready on every single shot has been really important. But I think you know, also like I said before, starting the year down in Norfolk was really good for me to help ease that transition. And you know, now I feel totally comfortable, and hopefully the next transition is that easy as well. Moose goaltender Thomas Millich is our guest on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Moose back at home for a big homestand beginning tomorrow. Um, this has been just an incredible turnaround for the club. I mean, there was real struggles early in the new year. You've now won eight of nine. Um, how's it all come together, and how much fun are you guys having winning as much as you have been lately? Oh, yeah, the vibes in the room are great right now. You know, I think uh, one thing that might have helped even a little bit was the two long road trips that we've had in the last – month and a bit you know I think just being able to be on the road and traveling with the guys is you know something that I find at least you know really helps create team chemistry and you know I think we've really clicked into that playoff mentality now 
every game's important. So, you know, we're doing our best to come in each, each night with a win. Well, I mean, and now you put yourself in a great spot to at least be in that play-in series right now. And it didn't look like that was going to be the case about a month ago. Um, you, you, you mentioned, listen, I mean, there were some real hard luck losses earlier on in the season. Um, once you start getting a taste, I mean, you can speak to this personally from yourself as a goaltender, you know, when you get a win and then follow it up with another win. But how much momentum you individually have built, but also the team around you is built right now, where it sounds like, you know, right now when you guys are out there, you're expecting to win. And that maybe wasn't the case earlier on in the season. Yeah, absolutely. We're always chasing that next win right now. And, you know, I think it's a lot of it attributes to the contagious energy that we have right now. You know, we see guys blocking shots in games and other guys want to put their body on the line too. So I think it's really just, you know, chasing that feeling of that next win. What, uh, you know, from a goaltender's perspective, when you see your teammates, um, you know, blocking shots, doing everything to kind of put you over uh, over that, I mean, what's it like to get that sort of support from your teammates as well? Um, because, again, goalies have to do that when things don't go that well as you are the last line of defense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can see up and down the lineup, guys are willing to do that. And, you know, like I said, it's contagious. And there's tons of habits during a game, you know, having short shifts, back checking hard, and you know, you can see it happening on the ice and you know, just just something in the air right now that guys really want to win and do it for each other. Hey, tell us about I, I'm always uh, listen, I, I will say full disclosure, Jeff Malott is one of our favorite guys. I mean, just an absolute gem of a guy. He's been on the show a bunch of times and he's been there a few years. He seems to be in a lot of ways, you know, one of those veteran leaders. Um, but there's also a bunch of young players like yourself, recent draftees that are playing and playing significant minutes. How would you describe the, you know, the rookie veteran makeup of the club and uh, kind of the roles of a player like a Jeff, uh, like like him a lot, as opposed to, uh, you know, these young guys now coming in, getting confidence and really feeling a big part of the team's success? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot to start off with. He's been incredible. You know, he was one of those guys that, I remember, you know, coming into training camp my first time, he was one of the guys that went out of his way to introduce himself and make me feel at home. And, you know, I think he's just one of those guys that's willing to do that for anyone and, you know, really help build the culture that surrounds this team. And, you know, I think it's, you know, really starting to take toll on all the younger guys too. They, they want to act like that as well. And, you know, he's just a, a great lead by example guy. Well, I mean, imagine you got a pretty good group of uh, of dudes right around your age as well that are having a lot of fun, kind of being pros right now. And uh, but as we all know, it's a heck of a lot f- more fun being a pro when you're winning games the way you are right now. Yeah, of course. You know, I think all the young guys are getting along super well, and you know, it, it's pretty cool again to have you know not being the only young guy on the team. Of course, you know, just being able to experience all the new things together and you know really grow as a team. Thomas, I have to ask you, goalies are notoriously quirky. Some of them, not all of them. Uh, very particular um, very particular programs they go through on game days. Uh, what, what's your normal game day routine? And how is that going to change tomorrow when you drop the puck at 10.30 a.m. in a building full of very loud, very excited school kids cheering on the moose? Yeah, no kidding. But, uh, you know, I'm someone that, tries to steer away from any superstitions you know i'm i've always believed that the more things that have to go right that just means there's more things that can go wrong so you know i think that helps me out a lot especially when you know you're used to playing seven o'clock games and all of a sudden you got a 10 30 a.m game so i think i do a good job of just doing what i got to do to you know get a meal in you know do my my stretching my hand eye work and you know just i i guess i say it's more of a more of a routine than a superstition to do all that. What time, what, like for a seven o'clock game, what time does that routine start? And like how early are you usually at the building before a start? Well, really the, the whole routine starts the night before, you know, it, you know, stretching the night before getting a good meal. Hydration is huge. You know, I'm someone who sweats quite a bit. So being able to, you know, be hydrated and not cramp up during the games is big. And then, you know, we go in in the morning for morning skate get a quick nap in, in the afternoon and usually anywhere from two and a half to three hours before the game. That's when I'm showing up to the building and, you know, starting all that. 
Well, it's funny. You're just thinking about this game tomorrow. If you did what would traditionally be a morning skate, that skate would be at about two in the morning. So I don't think that's <laughs> happening tomorrow. Um, listen, Thomas, this has been a lot of fun. I mean, congratulations on your recent personal success. And man, it is great to see the amount of excitement that you and your teammates have right now, winning eight of nine, getting right back into a playoff spot. And I imagine you think it's not how you start, it's how you finish. I mean, the way the team's playing right now, you keep this going, I mean, you'll be dangerous in a very tough out come the Calder Cup time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're, you know, really something's in the air right now. And, you know, I guess it's that the playoffs coming around. So we're treating every game like a playoff game right now and hopefully keep it rolling. Well, listen, congratulations on a, a great season. I mean, you've done well everywhere you've been. Now the place you want to be right now is right here in Winnipeg in that moose net. Good luck tomorrow. An early game, 10.30 a.m. at Canada Life Centre. It will be a scene in the stands. I know it will probably be one of the most fun games you guys have played at home all year long. And then again on Wednesday, as well as on the weekend. Um all the best and continued success to you and the Manitoba Moose, Thomas, and we'll look forward to having you on the program in the future. Appreciate your time. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Good stuff. There's Thomas Millich of the Manitoba Moose, and uh, big win for the team, big wins for the team, I should say, on the weekend. And now from a point where they are, I think, about six or seven back of a playoff spot, you look at the uh, D- Central Division, they now have a six-point cushion on the Chicago Wolves and a seven-point cushion on the Iowa Wild and two games in hand on the Iowa Wild. And, you know, we're only seven back of the Texas Stars with two games in hand. Uh, it has been a, a huge turnaround, eight and two in their last ten. As I mentioned, they've won eight of nine. And uh, heck of a one. Tequan Apollo's in there. Thanks, Thomas, and good luck the rest of the way. A uh, great week to get out uh, with the Jets on the road, by the way, and see the Manitoba Moose. And again, go to the website, winnipegsportstalk.com. We do have some tickets for the big game on Saturday that you can win on Winnipeg Sports Talk. All right, let's get Remus back in here. And uh, Remus, fun conversation with Thomas. And what a what a wild season he's had. Um, you know, starting off here, going down to the East Coast League, which at time for, for a, a goaltender that has done everything at the junior level, both, you know, in the WHL, World Juniors. Sometimes you wonder, you know, how you know, young players and prospects that have had so much success would, would handle that. Um, hard to imagine him handling it much better, getting the time with Canada at the Spangler and then coming back to the Moose and really establishing himself as uh, the guy right now for Manitoba playing their best hockey of the season. Yeah, he's done well everywhere he's played. Spent four years with Seattle. Saw him win the Memorial Cup last year, uh, you know, beating the Winnipeg Ice here. I'm seeing some people in chat still uh, salty about that, but... 20 years old, as as you said, started with Norfolk in the ECHL, called up to the Moose at a time with the Spangler Cup. Uh, what a season for your first year pro, and yeah, drafted in the fifth round, number 151 by the Jets, and as we've mentioned before, as that was the pick they acquired from the Rangers in the Andrew Kopp trade, and they also got Brad, you know, the picks that became Brad Lambert and Elias Salmonson in that trade as well. So, I mean, that's and just... Morgan Barron. Oh, and oh yeah, and Morgan Barron, who's got uh, ten goals for the Winnipeg Jets this season. So that trade's still paying off, and just all part of Chevy's solid. I don't know, five, last two years of GMing and building the Winnipeg Jets into a team contending for first place in the Central Division. So Manitoba Moose, you know, it's been some ups and downs for them, but heading into this homestand, they're playing really well. They do play, yes, tomorrow, ten thirty a.m. Game Hus, that's that is going to be a wild, wild crowd. There's nothing more fun than those AHL games or Western League games when they play in the day and it's busload after busload after busload of kids. Many are seeing a hockey game for the first time. the The volume is going to be cranked up at Canada Life Center tomorrow, and uh, hopefully the Moose can keep on going. You know, I'm just looking, you know, at the stats so far right now. <clears throat> Brad Lambert now is leading the team with 43 points in 51 games, 18 goals. Kyle Capabianco's having a crazy season as well. Eight goals, 42 points. Malott, one back with 41 points in 56. And then Nikita Chibrikov with 37 points. I mean, it is quite, uh, it, the, the, the offense has been distributed quite well. Axel's been awesome since he's been back with the club. Villy's got 16 points in the 26 games that he's played right now. 
Uh, we can't forget about Parker Ford, another first-year pro, having a great season at 31 points. I mean, you know, overall, you knew it would sort of take some time, um, but Mark Morrison and uh, and Bomber, I mean, they've got that got these guys believing in themselves night in and night out, and uh, the wins are coming. And as I said, it really isn't how you start, but how you finish. And we'll see what happens in the four five series. But I, I, I do think that this Manitoba team, you know, playing the way they are right now with the momentum they have, could um, it could be one of those dark horse teams come Calder Cup time and uh, scare a few teams up to the top of the standings. Yeah, I'll have to see how it plays out, us and yeah, Brad Lambert certainly, uh, he's you know really breaking out here, as you said, forty three points in fifty one. Uh, so the you know the Moose are putting together a solid season. It's really helped them lately, getting Axel Janssen Fialbi uh, back full time since the Jets have become healthy. He's got nineteen and twenty six. Uh, Dominic Toninato was very solid here, playing a solid role there. So. Um, you know the jet, the moose are uh, are playing really well, and getting those guys is certainly uh, a part of it. I do wonder, just back to you know the way we ended up the conversation with Mike. I do wonder about you know Perfetti getting a little bit of time with the moose. Like I think that's maybe more in the mix if Velarde's back, and I guess that's very much up in the air. But I'll tell you what, to come back into that dressing room with a great group of young players that are feeling it right now, having success, you know that that would follow up for Cole there. That might be something that actually could be a real positive thing for a young guy that's in a real tough spot right now with the big club. Yeah, I'm not on that page. I think maybe it would help his um, his develop, you know, development just playing games rather than sitting in the press box. But I think he's part of the Jets. He's been on them the whole season. You know, you're also saying to the guy, you know, hey, you're no longer getting uh, that juicy NHL paycheck. So I don't think, like, I think he's part of the, I just think he's entrenched in the Jets, and I don't think they're looking to send him down. Now, the de- there's a lot of talk here about the playoffs, us At the trade deadline, you have to be on an NHL ro- or AHL roster if you want to be in the playoffs, and they didn't send him down, at least yeah. unless, unless it happened on clear, Friday. The old it was- clear day roster. And it was so busy that I forget, but they didn't. So I think I think it that kind of that ship has sailed, and they're going to ride with him on the Jets. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, going to be a fun week. Uh, the Moose home tomorrow for the early game in the morning, Wednesday, and then on the weekend as well. Coming back from this long, long road trip. Um, let's get to our cool bet lines for tonight. And by the way, a quick little. Breezy Ben golf report as we get to our cool bet lines. The cool bet accounts looking pretty good. Thank you, Scotty Scheffler. What a performance at the Players' Championship yesterday, making up a five-shot deficit with a 64 in the final round. Apparently today, Tiger, PGA stars are in Nassau, Bahamas, meeting with uh, Yasser from the Saudi PIF Fund. It's going to be interesting following the golf uh, insiders as we get closer to, um, well, finding out what the heck's going on with the future of pro golf. It's been, I mean, no one pays attention to live. The PGA Tour so far this year had a lot of kind of unknown names winning tournaments. The players with the star-studded leaderboard, the world number one coming back in the fashion that he did was a massive, massive thing for the tour. But again, there's still a lot of work to be done to get the game back to a good spot because I think most, you know, most followers of it realize that the splintering of the top tour has really damaged the product on both sides. And uh, we hope it'll get to a good spot. I cannot wait to get out to Breezy. So this season, just talk to Corey Johnson. The fellas are ready to go. Get this snow uh, out and let's get onto the course. You can find out more on uh, Winnipeg's top private clubs, Breezy Bend online at breezybend.ca. Um, cool bet lines for tonight, though. Got a little extra scratch after Scotty did the job yesterday. But only two games tonight to uh, potentially sprinkle on Remus. The Washington Capitals back from the dead in Calgary. Huge game for both teams, in particular Washington. Caps plus 116, money line underdogs. Calgary minus 137. Hard not jumping on the dogs right now after those big wins in Seattle and Vancouver. 
after pretty humbling losses here in Winnipeg and last week to Edmonton. Yeah, I thought Washington was was toast. I mean, they did not look good here. They got smoked again by Edmonton on the road trip. But then, hey, they go into Vancouver, who's been in first place, and uh, and they come up with a win. I was really shocked uh, by that. So we'll see what happens with Washington. I can't believe that they're still alive. You know, they traded a number of players at the deadline. It just hasn't gone that well for them. But, you know, here they are. And uh, Calgary's a team, you know, you don't really know what you're going to get with them every night. So we'll see what happens uh, with the Capitals. Uh, you know, mentioned Vancouver. But anyway, during the first half of the season, they were scoring on every shot. A lot of um, people were saying, oh, their shooting percentage is so high. You know, every shot, everyone is scoring. Uh, Pedersen, who, Hoaglander, JT Miller, Besser, all these guys scoring tons of goals, but their shooting percentage has come down and they're a bit snake bit. So the percentages do seem to uh, work out uh, always. That's just straight math, I guess. So we'll see what happens with Vancouver going forward. But yes, Washington still alive and playing Calgary. Tonight, us. And then uh, Buffalo and the Kraken. This is basically draft lottery time. Buffalo lost that game to Detroit on the weekend. And the Kraken are lost, lost four in a row. Kraken, a slight home favorite. I wouldn't normally pay attention to this game, but with only two on the docket, I might. Do you have, do you have a lean on this one? No, I guess take the home team and a pick them. You know, I think Kraken are good. Sabres have had problems with goaltending and defense all year, though that Bowen Byram trade, I think, has worked out well. And, you know, if it works out for them, you know, we've heard it before. You know, the Sabres rebuilding. They've got all these young players. And just, you know, when they pick Jack, I go, oh, they're ready to turn it around. Rasmus Dali, you know, oh, you know, first overall pick, ready to turn. It just hasn't worked that way. Tate Thompson hasn't been as good. He's also been injured. Uh, they haven't figured out the goalie situation although upl has he's been pretty solid um but i like seattle and seattle's an interesting team too because they were so good last year everything went their way they made it into the playoffs you know sc scoring by committee uh taking a bit of a step back i think falling back down to earth this year they do have some some top prospects moving forward but i'll take the home team in in seattle has over uh, over Buffalo. Although Buffalo, this is, everyone's joking, this is the classic Sabres get eliminated from the playoffs and then start, yeah. pl start playing well. Maybe they can build it because we haven't seen them in the playoffs for a long time. But it's not going to be this year. Yeah, well, this is a huge game for Washington tonight. I think I'm just going to go plus 116, Caps money line. And uh, I believe that game's on uh, Rogers Sportsnet, so we'll be able to watch that one on TV as well. If you have not played at CoolBet before, use the promo code WST, 100% bonus on your first deposit up to 200 bucks. And I'm going to tease this out, Remo, right now. We are working on, you can also, CoolBet does have poker. Um, I love playing online poker, do it at CoolBet all the time. We are going to put together a lock shop, WST, EST, tourney at some point. We're just planning on dates and whatnot. And uh, there's going to be special bounties on my head, Nielsen's head, probably your head as well if you're going to be in on oh. it. Oh? <laughs> how, how cool would that be? A little online poker tourney with our friends from Edmonton Sports Talk and all of the lock shoppers. I, uh, I'm i quite fired up. I was uh, actually getting ready for the tourney, playing a little online this weekend. Okay, I, yeah, I'm very fired up. Used to be very big into poker you know, during the NHL lockout 2004 or 5, remember watching like every episode of World Series of Poker when Chris Moneymaker won in 2006. I was watching Raz, Stevan Card Stud, uh, obviously Texas Holden. Raz. Raz was the best. I love Omaha. Omaha. Oh, we were so into Omaha. I forgot about that one. Yeah, Raz is when you uh, try to make the worst hand and win. But yeah, if there's poker, I'm definitely in. If we can get listeners in, uh, that sounds great as well. And if that's something you would be interested in, sign up for our mailing list because we'll definitely send yes. out the details on that. WinnipegSportsTalk.com. Scroll to the bottom and put in your address uh, for the mailing list. Um, yes, and I see a number of people that are all fired up for the mention of the poker tourney. So uh, stay tuned to the program. We will let you know on, uh, on that, and uh, it would be great. Uh, what kind of poker? Uh, it'll be just your standard, um, what is it called, Texas Hold'em? Texas Hold'em, yeah, no limit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'll be, we'll do a turn, tourney style. 
Um, yes, T will Texas hold them. So, uh, anyways, that'll be fun. You know, it'll just be a certain amount to to enter the tourney, and then you know, if you go all in and you get busted, you're out. Basically, simple as that. But if you take out me or Reem or Dusty, there will be a special bonus to anyone that takes out players with the bounty on it. So we're working on that. Pat, JBM, the rest of the fellas, we're going to do it on a day that a day that works for everyone where there's no Jets or Oiler game. So whether we have to wait till playoffs for that, end of the regular season, the, the, we're, we're working on it right now. But it was just a little tease to stay tuned. But yes, get on the mailing list, not only to win great prizes, including AEW tickets coming up. Cannot wait for AEW. Um, and as well as moose tickets coming up this weekend. Uh, just before we go, and Bruce mentioned this while we're talking about our pals out in Edmonton. I mean, did you watch that Avs Oilers game on Saturday night? I was actually playing hockey, so I missed a good portion of it, but I saw the finish. Awesome game. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, 0.5 seconds left. And uh, I mean, that uh, Oilers have been must watch. I mean, Connor McDavid, even my brother, not the biggest hockey fan, he's like tuning into these Oilers games. He's like, man, you can really tell how much faster uh, McDavid is everyone. You have two of the best players going head to head. Um, incredible. And you think that game is going to be like a super high scoring game. But, you know, I th- feel like when you get into those divisional matchups, they get all grindy and, and lower scoring. And there was Nathan McKinnon making an unbelievable play. Um, you know, for the win there for uh, for Colorado in overtime. So pretty in- incredible stuff. Yeah, I mean, I was pulling for Edmonton for obvious reasons, hoping that the Avs didn't get their two points. They ended up getting them. They're on a tear right now. But uh, right now, pull up the standings. You know how it is. Jets, number one. They've got games in hand on both Colorado and Dallas. They're all tied at 91 points. And they'll look to get to 93 tomorrow night against the New York Rangers. One other quick thing that we should mention, Reem. The craziness of NFL free agency has died down. How about the Pittsburgh Steelers swooping in and getting Justin Fields from the Bears for pennies on the dollar? I was shocked at that. Um, Pittsburgh, you know, they haven't really had a quarterback for the last couple years since Roethlisberger. Like, who are they throwing out there? Kenny Pickett? Well, they drafted Kenny Pickett in the first round, and it just didn't really work out. And he obviously didn't want to compete. He got traded to Philly. Mm -hmm. Like, who do you have a better chance of playing behind? The team that drafted you with Russell Wilson coming in on a one-year, $1 million deal, or Jalen Hurts, Pro Bowl QB, who just signed a quarter billion dollar extension. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Maybe he got pissed off at the team. Um, I, I don't know what happened there, but I do know they've just used some really bad quarterbacks. Uh, Mason Rudolph in there. They used Trubisky. Uh, Delvin Hodges got six starts for them in 2019. And, you know, they've had really bad quarterback play this year with Pickett, Rudolph, and Trubisky. And if they had someone who's at least competent, Maybe they could have been in the playoffs because their defense was so good. So I liked when they got Russell Wilson for low cost and really shocked that Justin Fields was only a sixth-round pick. Uh, He had some solid games. I guess there's some concerns about him around the league, but that was a a real shocker um, that they got him for so low, and I'm sure he'd be competent in Pittsburgh. I don't think they want to trade him in the division. I can tell you that much, but... Mm -hmm. Um, anyways, that's a very interesting and cheap QB room for the Steelers. They added Patrick Queen last week. And listen, if I'm Chicago, I'm not even picking up the phone if it's Pittsburgh calling. We remember they got Joey Porter Jr. with the first pick of the second round last year after the Chase Claypool trade. So they, uh, they're, and Mike Cochran said, apparently the Bears took lesser offers as Poles was looking up for fields. I do believe that. I think they wanted to do him right Give him a chance to go to a place where he might start. Although Pittsburgh said Russ is going to be the starter, we'll see about that when we get through uh, when we get through training camp. Um, one other thing on the way, Doug Phil just mentioned this. I'm sure you saw this on Twitter, Reem. How about that Fanatics '97 dry sidle jersey that just showed up in some Oiler fans' mail over the weekend? Yeah, I mean, Fanat. This happens seemingly weekly where someone orders a jersey from Fanatics. And it's either like the wrong number or the wrong name, or it's like the wrong, wrong logo with the wrong, you know, something just wrong about it. And yeah, their quality controls 
uh, been terrible, and they're taking over. You know, they took over the MLB jerseys, although you know I think they use Nike's specifications. But anyways, they're doing the NHL jerseys next year full time. They won't be Adidas jerseys; they'll be Fanatics. And at the consumer level, a lot of concerns about quality. And we've even talked about the hats the players wear, how they're just they just try to mass produce garbage and just like take a, a generic blank hat and you know put a logo that's a sticker on there. So we'll see what happens with the jerseys. But everyone just likes dunking on uh, Fanatics. That's like the, the popular thing. To do so, don't order from Fanatics. Go to local uh, Royal Sports. They have, you know, you can see the jersey you're buying, and see the, uh, you know, see that it has the correct number yes, on it. Yes, yes, exactly. Don't don't trust something showing up in the mail. There is some nice Fanatics merch, but I mean, I, there better be if you're taking over the entire league. A lot of it just isn't up to snuff. Anyways, that was hilarious to see a '97 Oilers dry sidle jersey show up in the mail bet they didn't think that's what they were getting when they ordered it um all right that's gonna do it for us great show today gang thanks for hanging out hit that thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for all you youtubers if you're watching later on always feel free to leave a comment subscribe to the mailing list the uh link is right up at the top or if you're watching this afterwards in the description to get in for aew ticket giveaways and Manitoba Moose ticket giveaways. And uh, I guess tomorrow will be on the show <clears throat> right as the Moose game finishes down at Canada Life Center for that very unique 10.30 a.m. start. Thanks to Mike McIntyre for jumping on with us. Thomas Millich, AHL Player of the Week. Great to have him on the program as well. And, of course, thanks to all the sponsors that make this show happen each and every day. Couldn't do it without them and couldn't do it without all of you. Have a great Monday night. We'll see you tomorrow. Game day edition. Getting ready for the Jets and the Big Apple at MSG to take on the New York Rangers. We'll see you then. Oh, my God. Oh! Shut it down. Let's go home. Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.